tied atop the division at 3-0. In the South, Texas hasn't played since losing to Oklahoma two weeks ago. They have been brooding, and they need to keep pace with the Sooners. John Spagnola, both of these teams with prolific offenses, but the defenses also tell a story here. That's right. You know, the fortunes of these teams so far this year have rested primarily on the play of their respective defenses, not their offenses. The 5-1 and one Buffaloes have played good defense down the stretch at crunch time. Of the 3-3 three and three Texas Longhorns, however, the same cannot be said. And the root of the problem can be summed up in two words. Missed tackles. Up 10 points in the fourth quarter against Notre Dame. Mark Edwards rambles through the Texas defense for a critical first down more missed tackles against Oklahoma up 11 points in the fourth quarter James Allen riddles the defense and goes for a first down and then late in this football game down three points Oklahoma has to convert on third down and James Allen makes Chris Carter miss right there goes for a critical first down and Oklahoma wins the football game on the next play. Texas must tackle well today to win this game. Colorado on a three-game winning streak, putting it on the line when we come back for the kickoff. Let's see. About six billion people on Earth. Less than half with phones. Most without cellular. Even fewer on Internet just discovered life on Mars. Hmm. Got work to do. Lucent Technologies. We make the things that make communications work. They were really growing up fast. Too fast. All Kelly talked about was going to high school and all I could think about was paying for college. I'm sure I played around with a few mutual funds, but I was no expert. So I started talking to someone who could help a broker at Dean Witter. We must plan for our client's future as if it were our own. Funny. Kids think their parents always have the right answers. I'm just making sure I do. We measure success one investor at a time. This is my idea of a challenge. So when I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice, that's what I thought I was getting into. What I got was a sure thing. High endurance deodorant. It evaporates less quickly than the leading stick. It also lasts longer and protects better. Old Spice even guarantees it. Or call 1-800-PROVE-IT and they'll buy you a stick of yours. So if you're looking for a real challenge, the sky's the limit. If you're looking for the best deodorant, try high endurance from Old Spice. Because now you've got proof. And a guarantee. Some people long for the good old days. Before there were hundreds of channels of television. Before there was an internet to surf. Before you could email someone on the other side of the world. Let me tell you something about the good old days. They were pretty dull. I want to see things I've never seen, hear things I've never heard, experience things I've never experienced. Otherwise, what's the point of being here? Phillips Magma Box. <laughs> Back at a sold-out Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado, the autumnal hues giving way to winter soon as we look at the temperature today. They say if you don't like the weather here in Boulder, Dean Blevins, just stick around for 10 minutes. What's up? Well, the last 10 minutes, the temperature has gone down. The wind has come up. 40% chance of snow expected here. Colorado says the worse the weather, the better for them against this team from the warm climate of Austin, Texas. We'll be following many stories for you today. Let's take a look at some of those that we'll have for you, including we'll be charting those missed tackles that John mentioned a few minutes ago to go. We'll watch a classic matchup of veteran stars Dan Neal and Matt Russell give you some perspective of Rick Neuheisel's fun and gun and it's a huge game for John Makovic who was wiped out two years ago in a game against Colorado in Austin. John? Uh, Deeney took a big hit. John Makovic head coach spent a lot of time this week working on the defensive end of things. A lot of pressure on that defense. A great offensive mind as well, John Makovic. Meanwhile, you're looking at the third youngest head coach in NCAA Division I football, Rick Neuheisel, the head coach of the Colorado Buffaloes, telling us earlier that Texas has as much talent man for man as any team that they have faced this year. And he also told his Colorado team to get on Texas early today in this football game. He feels that they're a team without confidence right now. Colorado won the toss, electing to receive. Chris Stockton kicking off for the Longhorns. Ryan Nunez and Marcus Stiggers back deep for the Buffaloes, and we are underway in Boston. 
shoulder. That's Nunez. Slipping and falling at the 18-yard line, and that's where they will start. Starting quarterback for Colorado is Coy Detmer. Detmer, 6'1", not terribly big, 185 pounds. He leads the Big 12 in total offense and passing efficiency. Had three interceptions, three of those five interceptions on the year, three of them last year, John. Yeah, a couple were, couple were tip balls, but, uh, you know, it's amazing about him. He's been around Colorado for a while, but this is only his 13th start. First down and 10. Quick slant, incomplete. Intended for Kidd. As we look at the Chili's backs and receivers, Ray Carruth, number 21, is lightning quick and fast. As we look at the Chili's backs and receivers, it is second down, the handoff to Herschel Troutman. He makes it out to the 25-yard line. It'll be third down and about two and a half to go as we look at the offensive line. Chris Naoli's one of the top three guards in all of college football. Oddly enough, he was left off the Outland Trophy semifinalist list. I don't understand why. Third down and two for Colorado on its opening series. Denmer passes up in the air, almost picked up, and there's a flag down at the 30. That was intended for number 80, Phil Savoy. Well, they've tried that slant in twice now, once to Carruth and once to Savoy. Ball is tipped and... That's Ray Carruth, almost the beneficiary of the tip ball. Steve Vucicek, the referee today, making the call. The infraction against Texas, pass interference. First down and 10 for the Buffaloes on the 31-yard line. Troutman the lone back, motion up front, flags down on the field. So Chris Niley jumped early on that play, so they're going to get set back five yards. Look at that front seven defensively for Texas. They line up in a 3-4 alignment. Aaron Humphrey, one of the bigger surprises this year, defensively for the Longhorns. And the secondary, an experienced and talented group. Yeah, 113 starts among these four players in the secondary. Here's Troutman, collared at the 31-yard line. Dusty Renfro with a little rodeo action there. Yeah. Collared down Troutman on that play. Troutman, a stout short guy, just 5'7". Colorado has scored in the last three games on its first drive. Second down and 10. Here's Troutman again. Out to the 37-yard line. Colorado trying to get its running game untracked, and that's been somewhat of a concern the entire season for the Buffaloes. You know, you notice uh, the Buffaloes are going to a hurry-up offense, a no-huddle offense. And they're trying to just run the football at Texas, which has not done well in rush defense. Third down and four, Denver passing, and he's picked off this time. Matt Jones making the pick for Texas. So Denver threw three picks last week, and he gets his first one here. Yeah, Matt Jones in position. Just a not a good pass at all by Denver. He hangs in the pocket, tries to hit his receiver. Savoy coming on a slant in. The ball's well behind him and late. Take another look at this. You know, it looks like he's trying to find the receiver to go through some of the coverage, and instead the ball is late behind Savoy and a turnover. So Denver off to a poor start in this game. Trying to hit that slant in three different times now on the left side, too. Ricky Williams, the lone back, Texas, with good field position on its first offensive series. And that's Ricky Williams, the sophomore from San Diego. The starting quarterback for the Longhorns is James Brown. He's a six-foot junior, 190 pounds, out of Beaumont, Texas. Five touchdown passes and five interceptions this season. He's coming off back-to-back 200-yard -back games, though. That's the first time this year, Mark. 
Mark, uh, last year he averaged 230 yards a game, so he's getting a little better rhythm in his passing game. Had a nice outing two weeks ago against the Oklahoma Sooners. Second down and eight for Texas. Williams the lone back again. Little waggle action. Over the middle, wide open, and incomplete intended for Wayne McGarrity. Threw it behind him, though. The Chili's backs and receivers for the Texas Longhorns up from Austin. Mike Adams, number 83, is a dangerous player. He's their all-time leading receiver. Number 11, right there, Ricky Williams, talented as well. And he should see a lot of action today. The offensive line has to do a good job up front. That's Ryan Feebiger, the center on this team. He and Daniel, the right guard, number 69, are the two best players in this offensive front. Third down and eight for Texas. Brown complete. It's near the first down to McGarity, and it looks as if by the spot that he'll get it. Davis ran him out of bounds. Out of bounds. Much to the chagrin of Neuheisel, who didn't like the spot on yeah, that one. That's right. He's not pleased at all with that spot. McGarity, a primary receiver twice in a row now as we look at the defensive front seven. Matt Russell is a great inside linebacker, and I think he has a couple of screws loose, quite frankly. <laughs> Out of the Brian Bosworth mold. Bosworth, <laughs> in fact, one of his idols. In the secondary, the safety play has been strong. Ryan Black, the leader back there. Excellent at reading and dissecting, running and passing plays. And speaking of running, Ricky Williams gets that carry, moving it down to the 30-yard line. On the left side. Tackled by Ryan Sutter, number 36. By Ryan Sutter. Texas, as we mentioned, a very prolific offense. Think of a six the 415 board. yards Second per game. Four, Colorado's 30. defense, conversely, a stingy 306 yards per game. Yeah, the offense is ranked 27th in the nation. The defense for Colorado, 26th in the nation. It should be an interesting matchup of these two units. Second down and five for Texas. Three wide out, single back set. A three-step drop by Brown, complete to Adams. His forward progress will be marked at the 23-yard line, and that's a first down. Marcus Washington made the stop on the play as we look at the Big 12 today. Texas Tech trying to rebound from that loss last week against Nebraska. That's a real battle in that South Division right there. Nebraska taking on Kansas a little later tonight. Nebraska and Colorado tied at 3-0 in the North Division. Kansas State 28 to 7 over Oklahoma so Oklahoma's two game winning streak may come to an end yeah, and Oklahoma with a big one next week at home against Nebraska a game you'll see on ABC first down and 10 Ricky Williams stopped up nicely by the Buffalo defense storming to the ball at the 24 let's check in with John Saunders in New York with a Northwestern update Mark for the second consecutive week playing come from behind this time against Illinois on fourth and five Steve Schnur to Brian Musso nine yards they pick up the first down it sets this one up three plays later Adrian Autry his second rushing touchdown of the game he had 128 yards and Barry Gardner sealed the victory with an interception back to you. All right back here twin set and that is Ricky Williams. And we have flags on the field. Boy, does Northwestern how to know how to win a game by less than three points this year? I mean, they are incredible week after week winning football games the way they have. Beating Wisconsin at the end of the game. Beating Michigan. Yeah, if you're going to watch a Northwestern game, you, you don't want to have a weak heart. <laughs> no, not at all. And Texas has been in some close games of late, too. Most notably against Notre Dame. Well, he moves the ball back to the 29. A couple of weeks ago Second against Oklahoma. 16. Yeah, they lost two games on the last play of the game. Those two games you cited right there. Second down and 16 after that penalty. Fitzgerald, the tight end, lined up to the right of James Brown. And Fitzgerald, the intended target and the catch. Down to the 18-yard line, tackled by Ryan Black, the free safety. Ryan Black is having a discussion with Matt Russell right now, the middle linebacker. You're going to see Fitzgerald release here, and nobody covers him. And Black, who's playing the free safety position, has to come up and make the play. I think Russell had man-to-man -man coverage there. Instead, he was dropping in his zone. 
Third down and five for Texas. Adams split wide to the bottom of your screen. Colorado coming with the blitz, and Brown is sacked back in the 25 by Ryan Olsen. One of the best pass rushers on the team, and he leads the team in sacks. That is his sixth. He's really coming along defensively. A.J. Kristoff is very pleased with his performance. Number 55, top of your screen right here. See, Matt Russell absorbs the left tackle position, and nobody accounts for the defensive lineman. You always want to count for the defensive lineman first as an offensive lineman in pass protection. Phil Dawson now, John, in to attempt a field goal from 41 yards out. He is 12 of 16 on the season. They get the snap down, and Dawson nails it. So the Texas Longhorns take a 3 to nothing lead and did a good job getting the snap down on that one. We'll be back to Boulder in just a minute. In an age of streamlining and downsizing, Chili still makes its big mouth burgers by hand, one at a time, by a person. What this lacks in efficiency is more than made up for in taste. Chili's big mouth burgers, monuments of inefficiency. Play football at Chili's this season. In every restaurant, you can win two round-trip tickets on Southwest Airlines to anywhere they fly. A football or Chili's Big Mouth Burgers. All just for playing. To compete overseas, you can't go it alone. You need to be part of a team. A world-class competitor that's fast and well-trained. A team that knows the territory around the world. Global delivery services from the U.S. Postal Service. If you're going places overseas, ride with us. No one delivers like the U.S. Postal Service. Someday, my office will have a window. Someday, my boss will be me. my dreams. Guess not today. The Chevy Camaro's 200 horsepower 3800 V6. Therapeutic, isn't it? High-ranking Nebraska invades Oklahoma, or Michigan State battles Big Ten rival Michigan. It's game one of an ABC College football doubleheader next Saturday. Texas leading three to nothing. John Makovic happy about his field, no doubt. His team, no doubt, moving down the field and getting a field goal. Yeah, the lost. Colorado defense, though, came through once again. They've made big plays all year, and they were able to shut down Texas and just limit them to a field goal attempt. Damon Dickey, number 22. Rick Neuheisel, meanwhile, wanted to see his team jump on Texas early. Hasn't happened yet. Chris Stockton kicking off. Back deep, Ryan Nunez and Marcus Stickers. Oh, it's a poacher. Fielded at 20 by Stickers. Runs it out over the 30, brought down in the 32-yard line. And Colorado now with its second offensive possession of the ball game. Marcus Stiggers, number three, did a nice job of hustling under that football. The wind was uh, pushing that ball down pretty quickly. And that second line of the kickoff return team was not, they didn't have the kind of skill people you want handling the football. Colorado's offense averages about 460 yards per game. That is tops in the Big 12. And they run it on first down and 10. That's Troutman out near the 35-yard line. He'll have about three on the play. Tackled by Kyle Richardson and Dwight Kirkpatrick. Defending the run and stopping the run. Paramount for Texas today. Yeah, they're ranked 13th in the nation. First in the Big Ten, as you mentioned, Mark. Colorado offense. Texas defense, 349 again. They're 53rd in the country, but 89th against the rush, giving up over 200 yards a game rushing. And they have tired at times late in games during the season. Little counterplay, Troutman again, making his way through the hole and brought down at the 38-yard line. 
Cedric Woodward making the tackle on the play. And you mentioned a tiring aspect. You know, we've seen a little bit of a hurry up, no huddle offense here. I wonder if that's part of the strategy to keep the pressure on this Longhorn defense, make them play more plays defensively and try and wear them down with the higher altitude and throughout the course of this football game. It is third down and two. John Makovic keeping a watchful eye on the defense all week long. For the last two weeks, quick slant again intended for Chris Anderson, incomplete, and the Buffaloes will have to punt. The Texas defense holds. Well, Troutman went in motion to that side, and they tried to get a little bit of a pick action at man-to-man Texas defense. But again, we've seen four or five passes now to the left side, all short, and a lot of them have been dangerously tipped. One has been intercepted, so... Detmer and company and New Heights will have to get their acts together offensively. Into punt now, Nick Peach for Colorado. And the dangerous punt returner, Mike Adams, right there, number 83, standing on his own 23-yard line. Peach last week had a punt go 76 yards. This one not quite that far. Adams will get a chance to return at the 25. Mike Adams, they call him the playmaker, and here's a play for you. Adams brought down and fumbles it. They're going to mark it back at around the 13-yard line. Dwayne Sherrington making the touchdown-saving tackle for Colorado. And Mike Adams with a big play for Texas. 66 yards on the punt return. You know, there were 13 players for Colorado who did not play the last two weeks because of the phone scandal. A lot of them were special teams players. They said special teams should be better this week because all these players are back in the lineup. You don't see it in the coverage here. Nobody was near Adams when he caught that football and finally gets dragged down behind. And definitely the ball did not fumble. I mean, it was an accurate call right there. Look at Adams, just right up the middle. You don't see many players at all for Colorado until the very end when finally Adams gets tracked down from behind. Adams showing a little bit more speed than we saw a couple weeks ago. He's been bothered by a pulled stomach muscle. He continues to get healthier. The Longhorns on the 12-yard line, first and 10. That's John Mitchell. And he's brought down right near the line of scrimmage at the 13. Mitchell, a 5-foot-10-inch, 195-pound senior. Ran for over 1,000 yards last year for the Longhorns. Tackled by Ryan Black, the safety. Mitchell out of Austin, Texas. His second down and 11 after that loss of one. Ricky Williams now the lone back. Brown's going to throw. Incomplete intended for Adams. And it'll be third down and 11. James Brown just five touchdown passes this year with five interceptions. John, do you think he's maxed out? Think he's plateaued? I don't, I don't think any player should really say they've plateaued, but I think that uh, it's tough for James Brown in this offense with new linemen, new receivers, Curtis Jackson's out. I think there's been a lot of transitions for him, and it's been tough for him to operate. Now, continuity and chemistry definitely a concern. He's 3 of 5 today. It's third and 11 right now. Colorado coming on a blitz into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. Wayne McGarry got the feet down. And James Brown just threw his sixth touchdown pass of the season. And Wayne McGarity, a sophomore, pressed into action because Curtis Jackson tore his knee up two weeks ago against Oklahoma. But watch the job that James Brown does, reading the blitz, recognizing the man coverage, buying a little time with his athleticism and throwing that ball, floating it up in the air. McGarity doing a great job runner, running underneath it. Torrey Davis was victimized, the quarterback on that play. Phil Dotson with the extra point, it is good. And the Texas Longhorns out of Austin, led by James Brown. Yeah, he's happy about it. They take a 10 to nothing lead here in the first quarter. We'll be right back. It takes 43 face muscles to make a frown. But if you drive a Lumina LS, you won't have to worry about using any of them. Because Lumina LS can go 100,000 miles before its first scheduled tune-up. No six-passenger car in its class can offer you as many standard safety features for the price. And best of all, you can afford it. Genuine 
The cars more Americans trust. Yesterday's antifreeze coolants don't offer today's multi-metallic engines enough corrosion protection from extreme hot and cold. They need Xerox with its one-of-a-kind patented formula, not just to protect radiators, but also water pumps and cylinder heads. So use Xerox. Otherwise, your engine could be extremely unprotected. Xerox. Extreme protection for today's engines. Room 518 wants to give a speech that brings his company back to life. Good morning. I had a speech written, but I think it's better I speak to you from my heart. Marriott, when you're comfortable, you can do anything. College football and ABC Sports brought to you by Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. Lucent Technologies, we make the things that make communications work. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. And Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. Mark Jones, along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins, it's 7.03 remaining in the first quarter. Texas stunning the sellout crowd by taking a 10 to nothing lead. That's Chris Stockton getting set to kick off to Ryan Nunez and Marcus Stiggers. Texas coming into this game, 10 point underdogs. Stockton's kick out of bounds huh. at the six yard line. You know, he pooched the last one and now he tried to drive one deep into the corner. Stockton tried to do a lot of different things in the kicking game today. And that's gonna hurt his team defensively. Free kick infraction by the kicking team by Royals. The ball will replace on a 35 yard line. Look at our officials today. The man wearing the white hat is Steve Usachek. Coy Detmer has yet to complete a pass today. He is 0 of 3. Lyndon Henry now behind Detmer in a tailback. And here's Henry. Henry with a first down, but there's a flag down at the 41-yard line. The tackle made by the free safety Chris Carter. A 14-yard pickup, but will it stand? Again, the touchdown. You see Wayne McGarity at the bottom of the string screen. I'm sorry, working one-on-one -on, -one on Torrey Davis. But look at the job that James Brown does. Recognizing single coverage, which is always the case in the blitz. McGarity gets one foot down, which is all you need. Here's the catch. And in college, one foot's all you need. It'd be nice if he dotted the eye with that other foot. He'll learn to do that as he gets more experience. <laughs> little penmanship with the feet. And that touchdown pass, by the way. Offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. Let me finish my story. That touchdown, by the way, thrown by James Brown, gives him 37 on his career at Texas, tying him with Peter Gardere for the school lead all time. It's first down and 14 now for the Buffaloes after that penalty. Play fake, picked off again. Westbrook. Returns it down to the 19. Detmer with a second interception today. And this defense has risen to the occasion today for Texas. Let's go down to Dean Blevins. Well, guys, in battle defensive coordinator Gary Darnell has gone from the sideline to the booth. Say he gets a, they say he gets a better picture up there. Danny Rocco, a very bright and up-and-coming young defensive coach, then inside linebackers coaches down here on the field. One fact this week is that John McEvick has spent considerable time in working with the defense. He's an offensive coach, but the past two weeks he's been working a lot with the defense. So far, they're making very big plays. They sure are, Dean, and a stunned silence hangs over Folsom Field right now. And that was a look at Danny Rocco on the sidelines, the linebacker coach, outside linebacker coach for this team. Holmes and Williams in the backfield. Brown throws it right back. The pick by Steve Rosga. And Colorado takes it right back from Texas. That's a ball you simply don't throw with a free safety in the middle of the field. 
Rosga playing free safety, playing center field. James Brown wanted to get the football. It looked like to his tight end, Pat Fitzgerald. And both quarterbacks have made back-to-back -back mistakes here in this football game. We've seen three picks already today, and we're still in the first quarter. Let's retrace. Actually, both players are going to tight ends. You can see Brody Hefner's the intended receiver there. Brian Westbrook picks that off. Now Steve Roska, as James Brown tries to go to his tight end. Actually, that was to Michael Adams, number 83. And Roska was in position. So it looked to me like Adams did not finish his pattern. And here is Lyndon Henry. Colorado choosing to run it, taking a safer route this time for now. Thank Run goodness. it out to the 20, yeah. yeah. I just need a play like this. My head's spinning. <laughs> Aaron Humphrey and Chris Carter making the tackles for Texas. I'll tell you what, Coy Detmer's confidence has got to be a little bit shaken in this football game. He's thrown a couple of interceptions. He's 0 for 4 with two picks. And in the last two games, John, he has thrown five interceptions. Two receivers out to the top of your screen. Detmer hands it off to Henry again. Henry falls forward for the first down near the 25-yard line. Dusty Renfro and Robert Crenshaw making the tackle for the Longhorns. And that's got to be the recipe for this Buffalo offense. I mean, when you've got a team that's had trouble defensing the run, giving up 200-plus yards to three different teams this year, you have to say, hey, let's, you know, let's run the football. Let's, let's pound it at them. So far, the offense has run eight times for 48 yards and four passes with no completions. And look at that. 0 for 4 for Detmer. Two tight ends set this time for the Buffaloes. Henry again. Out to the 29-yard line. Folks, tonight on ABC, a special hour of America's Funny Zone videos on a special night. Then, a brand new hour of Coach starring Craig T. Nelson, followed by Relativity. All tonight on ABC. I wonder what Craig T. Nelson would think about all these interceptions being thrown right now. <laughs> It is second down and six to go for Colorado. The nose of the ball on the 29-yard line. Little waggle by Detmer. Has time. Gets a good block from his back and has a first down at the 42-yard line. Let's go back to New York and John Saunders. Mark Arizona State trying to march towards the Rose Bowl facing Stanford today. Following an interception, Jake Plummer scrambles out of trouble, finds J.R. Redmond, 31 yards, 7 zip. The Sun Devils with the lead. Mark. All right, John, back here. Five minutes remaining in the first quarter. Colorado with the ball on the 41 yard line, first down and 10. And now Detmer audibling at the line. Three wideouts. Texas coming with a blitz. Detmer on the slant completes it to Savoy at the 37-yard line. Savoy's had trouble hanging on to the ball of late, but that time he hauled it in to pick up 20 yards. Taji Allen made the tackle. You know, one thing about Detmer, the coaches tell us, is that if he sets his feet, he does a much better job. Carl Dorrell, the offensive coordinator, said, I don't like to see him moving around outside of the pocket too much. That's where he's had problems today. It's nice to see Phil Savoy go down and catch that football here. He has had problems dropping the football so far this season. He's dropped about a half a dozen passes. There he goes down with the numbers and does a real good job of securing the football. And look at the numbers so far. Colorado, more yards than Texas, but fewer points. Detmer has a ton of time to point to Carruth. At the 31-yard line, tackled by Allen. It was as a crossing pattern, pattern to Ray Carruth, and believe me, he had to go past three different linebackers and then a corner until he finally cleared all the coverage. But again, Detmer waits for him, waits for him, keeps his feet set, and finally does a good job of delivering that football. But you see Ray Carruth with a whole bunch of linebackers and everybody else chasing him across the football field. John, I would hazard a guess that before the day is over, Texas will have to get a little more pressure on Detmer defensively. And that's where they've been weak this year, that defensive line. Chris Akins is playing banged up in there, but he is in the football game. But this defensive line has a lot of youngsters playing on it, has not really done a good job of exerting pressure this year. Lendon Henry, the long back on second and three. Henry 
has the first down falling forward to the 26 yard line Chris Aikens the big fella number 96 right there making the tackle he's one of the two best players on defense for Texas and he has all the physical tools to play at the next level and a very hard worker as well well he sure is he, you know he's playing with a hip bone injury a deep bruise in the bone though and they only expected Aikens to play about 20 plays today we'll see if he can squeeze a few more out of his body movement on that right side check that left side of the offensive line for Colorado there's one thing that's hurt the Buffaloes this year it's been penalties they averaged 10 a game for 86 yards the worst game of course was against Michigan when they had 14 penalties against them in that football game offense five yard penalty repeat first down those penalties are something that Rick Neuheisel has talked about with his team trying to get them to be a little more disciplined but they have yet to find the remedy a look at the current drive that's their third penalty today so far too mark first down and 15 from the 31 yard line Colorado trailing 10 to nothing McCarty one of the tight ends in on this play they set up the screen to Henry Got the kickout block and runs down to the 24 yard line where he's tackled by number 59, Kyle Richardson, the six foot, 232 pound junior. Henry, number 39, gives Colorado a different type of look out of the backfield than does Herschel Trout. Henry, more of a bigger, more slashing type. He gets the ball upfield a little bit more. Troutman at 5'7", 190 is a little bit more of a scat back. But whenever you have that change up in backfield position, it can, it can really help your offense. Second and eight, Texas coming on a blitz. And they call the screen. Henry down to the 13-yard line and another Buffalo first down. Chris Carter made the tackle. A timely call on offense that time by the Buffalo. Yeah, and you know, when you're playing the cat and mouse offensive defensive coordinator, you can call a blitz because, hey, they just ran a screen on, on the previous play. Center Adam Smith, number 53, gets out in front of his ball carry, gets a good block downfield. Well, maybe not so good, but, you know, it's hard for those offensive linemen to throw downfield. Denver recognized the blitz early and got into an accelerated backpedal. And Detmer now, John, is four for four. Oh, my. Four and penalties. Boy, another penalty against Colorado coming up. Yeah, Tennyson McCartney, the tight end who's playing with all sorts of injuries. These tight ends, Matt Lepsis, who is the starting tight end. Ball start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. I say Matt Lepsis is out for the rest of the year. He had surgery on his toe. McCartney's playing with all sorts of injuries. He's got a uh, sprained knee. He has uh, degenerative, arth or degenerative arthritis in his toes. I mean, they've got a few people out last week. Desmond Dennis caught a touchdown pass, banged his knee on the play, and he's out in this game. Yeah, so out, out they're hurting with, a tight yeah, end. Yeah, out with 10 tonight. This is Desmond Dennis. First and 15. Three wideouts for the Buffaloes. They hand it off to Lyndon Henry, dancing out of the backfield. Brought down at the 14-yard line. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has awarded nearly $6 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Casey Hampton making that last tackle on the play. Second down and 12 for Rick Neuheisel's Buffaloes. Nose of the ball on the 15-yard line. This is the 11th play of the current drive for Colorado. 119 remaining in the first quarter. They trail 10 to nothing. Into the end zone. Intended for Savoy. And that ball was not catchable. Taji Allen with nice coverage on the corner that time. You're exactly right. The fans were calling for interference, but there was no way that football could have been caught in bounds. That'll bring on third down and long for Colorado. Trying to get a mismatch in size with Savoy at 6'3", going against Taji Allen at 5'11". It's a talented group of Colorado Buffalo receivers. Maybe as talented as we've seen all year, but so far, they've been kept in check. Third down and 12. They've got to get down to the three-yard line for a first down. Savoy in motion. Yeah. 
Detmer into the end zone dangerously incomplete and that Texas secondary is doing a great job today it was intended for Savoy and Dwight Kirkpatrick a linebacker at that in coverage in the end zone I'll bring on fourth down for the Buffaloes well Dwight Kirkpatrick is a converted safety so if you want somebody dropping back who is a linebacker you want somebody who has some past defense experience but that ball was thrown so that only his receiver could catch it. So, boy, not, uh, not anybody else on that Texas defense. Jason Wesley attempting a field goal from 32 yards out. He's 6 of 9 on the year. Out of the hold of Steve Rosga. And it's no good. He pulled it to the left. And the Texas defense escapes, surrendering zero points on that long drive. They lead 10 to nothing. Wonderful 75 Lac Louis Cabernet. Or an exquisite 58 Le Boussemillon. Or a 62 Je vous Pinot, if you're in the mood for. Uh... No, 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 no. Enough of that old stuff. The lady and I would prefer something fresh. How about something in a lager? What do you got in a Budweiser from, say, early this month? Budweiser. Guaranteed fresh with born on dates. Uh -huh. Some guy came into me after the race and asked me which Labonte was a better driver. Oh, really? What'd you tell him? I told him I was. <laughs> Why'd you tell him that? I am. No, oh, you're not. Yeah, I am. Uh-uh. Well, who won Richmond? <laughs> well, who won Michigan? <laughs> well, who won Bristol? <laughs> who won Charlotte? <laughs> well, who won the championship? Oh, man. Who, who drives, drives a Monte, Monte Carlo? Carlo? Genuine Chevrolet. The cars more champions trust, <laughs> including the better Labonte. Who's a better athlete? Who's a better actor? Who's a better singer? Folks, tomorrow don't miss final round coverage of the Tour Championship. Tom Lehman is at 13 under and Vijay Singh is at 4 under. He trails Lehman by 9 strokes. That's tomorrow at 3 Eastern, 2 Central and Pacific on ABC Sports. Ricky Williams, the lone back for Texas. First and 10 from their own 20. Adams on the stop and go pattern. Adams incomplete. Oh boy, they almost got interference there. Marcus Washington tried to tackle Adams at the end. Really didn't have to on that play. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins. Guys, Colorado felt coming into this game that they would have a lot of intangibles working for them. The weather, although it's not bad, that's not helping them. The altitude, we'll see if that's a factor. The weather, they thought it was going to be bad. As I said, the turf, this is the first time that Texas has played on it. Not a factor yet. And so they also wanted to take the lead early, John. That hasn't happened either early. So obviously, Texas is off to a terrific start. That's a real good point there. They did. Uh, Colorado felt they could get on this team because it lacks confidence. It has not happened so far. You can almost see the Texas confidence burgeoning right now. Brown has a man wide open downfield and overthrows him. Brian White broke in behind Marcus Washington, the corner, and James Brown missed him by just a touch. It'll be third down for Texas. You know, Brown did a great job throwing that football. What Brian White needs to do is keep running, keep running. He slowed down a little bit and waited for that football, and then it sailed on him, and he didn't have the speed to adjust to the football. He had a big play if he had just kept his motor running and allowed James Brown to hit him in stride. The wind is at Texas's back. So maybe, just maybe, that ball carried a little further than Brown expected it to. Two tight end set, two wide outs. Colorado blitzing, Brown to Adams, incomplete. And a late play. Marcus Washington again being picked on on the corner. Well, you know, he got his left hand on Adams. Now, whether or not the left hand, in fact, impeded Adams' ability to get to the football, it's a question that certainly the Buffaloes would debate throughout the afternoon. And it's against Washington on the corner. Yeah, Washington was in great coverage. Washington, the MVP in the Cotton Bowl last year. 
See Washington break on the football. He's got his hands on Adams. Boy, that's timed out pretty darn well. I don't know how much he hurt Adams' ability to catch the football. You know, usually a receiver will complain immediately. Adams didn't. John, look at that. Five penalties already against Colorado. Incredible. And we are not even out of the first quarter of play. First and ten from the 31 for Texas. Williams trying to get to the corner. Brought down at the 37. Let's go to John Saunders in New York for a Virginia update. All right, guys. Warwick Dunn gave Florida State a lead of 7-0 with a 65-yard touchdown run and Tiki Barber comes right back the longest run against Florida State from scrimmage this year covering 48 yards at seven apiece Tiki Barber one of the great names huh, John in all college football his brother Rondi second down and four and that's the end of the first 15 minutes of play Texas trying to snap that four game losing streak against Colorado in a very auspicious beginning right now. They lead 10 to nothing. Hey, help me figure this out. Usually the more gizmos you want, the more money you gotta spend. Then there's a Chevrolet Cavalier. It gives you a lot of the same gizmos that make expensive cars easy to live with for about half the price. If you forget to lock your doors, the Cavalier is still protected by a gizmo called the theft deterrent system. If you leave your dome light on, it turns it off. My house doesn't even do that. Get the car that's easy to own. A Cavalier. Genuine Chevrolet. The car's more Americans trust. Dave, darling, I saw your grilled chicken sandwich commercial the other day, and you looked fabulous. Anyway, I had to try one. Honey, it was delicious. The whole breast filet is bigger, plumper, and juicier than ever. And they made it fresh right when I ordered it. Dave, just between us, it was so good I had to. Don't tell. Love and kisses, Iman. You know Iman? When you got it, you got it. Try Wendy's new plumper, juicier grilled chicken sandwich. When you're choosing a name for your baby, you want one you'll feel good about for a long, long time. It's the same when you're choosing life insurance for yourself. You want something that will endure. When you go with State Farm, you get a life insurance company that has always received the highest possible ratings for financial strength. Which means State Farm is one name that'll sound just as good when your kids are growing up as it does today. State Farm understands life. pristine beauty and mosaic across the landscape here in Boulder, Colorado. Elevation about 5,200 feet. Some of the autumnal hues giving way to winter, no doubt, soon. Winter holding off today. We missed, uh, missed all that snow that they forecast for us. Yeah, they did. They said the Texas people were called here every 10 minutes trying to get a weather update. We were expecting six inches of snow and some pretty windy conditions, but the weather has held off so far, as you said. Second down and fourth for the Longhorns. Those of the ball at their own 36-yard line. They lead 10 to nothing as we begin the second quarter. James Brown to pass. And it's incomplete, but a flag down at the 41-yard line. Pat Fitzgerald, the tight end, was the intended receiver. Ron Merkerson, the outside linebacker, looks like he may get an interference call against him. Tight coverage on Pat Fitzgerald one-on-one. -on -one. And that's what the call is. So the flags are coming out today for defensive interference. That's for sure. And another penalty against the Buffaloes. But boy, I'll tell you, New Heisel, not New Heisel, he's working the official pretty well. Fitzgerald one on one on the left side here on Milkerson. And Merkerson, you know, had the arm on him again, and they call the penalty, so. But that's right in front of that Colorado bench. And Neuheisel still giving it to the official. To no avail, though, first and 10 from the 41. 
Brown hands it off to Ricky Williams, who reverses his field. Williams with another first down, still on his feet, and finally corralled at the 39-yard line. A pickup of 18, Davis making the tackle for the Buffaloes. Ricky Williams can make people miss, and if he doesn't feel like making you miss, he'll run you over, too. Yeah, one thing great backs have is vision. And he tries the strong side, looks back. I'd like to see James Brown, hold it right there, stop it. James Brown, if he can get a hit on the linebacker right there, go ahead and keep rolling it. He might be able to help Ricky Williams a little bit more out downfield, but I don't think James Brown has spent a lot of time with a blocking sled. Yeah, that's, that's a good career decision to leave that block alone. First and 10 from the 40-yard line for Texas. The quick slant intended for McGarrity, and he dropped it, had it in his arms, and dropped it. Oh, that's dangerous. You don't want to be throwing that ball up around there. Take a look at the first quarter stats if we can. And certainly Colorado has moved the football a lot more effectively, but right here the turnovers have led to the 10 points. Field goal and a touchdown to Wayne McGarrity, who just did a little bit of a juggling act on that last play. John, could have been worse for Colorado, too, because Texas threw an interception deep in Colorado territory trying to convert on their own turnover. That's right. On the 40-yard line, second and 10. Brown hands it off to Williams. Williams down to the 43, tackled by the middle linebacker, Matt Russell, the 6'2", 245-pound senior. Williams today, six rushes for a total of 33 yards. Played outfield in the Philadelphia Phillies farm system in Major League Baseball this past summer. Batted 188, had three homers and 20 RBI. He's going to work for his yards today. This is a tough defense to run against. Only two rushes this year, over 15 yards. And that was one of them there. Third and seven for Texas. Got to get to the 30. Williams won't make it. Brought down at about the 34-yard line. Mike Phillips, number 91, made the stop for Colorado. There's a look at Phillips, guy they like to bring off the corner during blitzes. Colorado linebacking grew a good one. They complement each other extremely well. Phillips, Russell, and Murkerson. Yeah, this is a defense they play about 80% man-to-man. They're going to be tested here on fourth down. Texas electing to go for it on fourth and five. They're four of six on fourth down conversions this year. intended receiver McGarrity and Colorado takes over on downs Brown locked on his intended receiver from the get-go and threw it behind him hold it here a second the linebacker walks up McGarrity's trying to run a little slant in I don't think he expects to see the linebacker right there and he's got to work through some traffic and a bump as James Brown tries to get the football to him Colorado played a good job there defensively, walking out the linebacker in that fourth and five situation. And Brown has missed his last five pass attempts now. So both quarterbacks have been streaky so far in this game. Brendan Henry, the back, with three wideouts for Colorado. This is Henry. Bouncing it outside. A couple of missed tackles, one of them by Chris Akins. Henry out to the 39-yard line. He's now rushed seven times for 35 yards as we look at the possessions in the first quarter. Keep in mind that punt right there was the big punt return by Mike Adams, who set up the only touchdown in this football game today. Second down and five for Colorado. A little counter, Henry again. Out near the first down marker at the 45, tackled by Casey Hampton. Colorado trying to establish that running game. Some people feel the running game is the one weak link in their offense. Certainly have a talented cast of receivers. And they do gain more yards through the air than on the ground. It's third down and one. Well, they ran Henry for 169, I'm sorry, last week against Kansas. That's a little bit better output than they have had in recent weeks, but I think they'd like to see a little bit more balanced offense. And Coy Detmer on third and one keeps it himself for the first down out to the 46-yard line. 
Detmer, not a big guy, just 185 pounds, 6'1". You know, I remember when I was in high school, I weighed in once for uh, How long was that? my senior year, many moons ago, and I weighed in at 185, and it was because I had two five-pound weights in each pocket. And I have a feeling uh, when Coy weighed in this year, he put those five-pound weights in each pocket, too. He's as skinny as a rail. That Texas defense having to lock on to those Colorado offensive players today. Just moments ago, Lyndon Henry breaking a couple of Texas tackles. Play fake by Denver. Downfield for Baruch. And he caught it. What a magic act. How does he do that? Pocus, Pocus, a 54-yard touchdown catch. Eleven, 190 pounds. Ray Carruth plays a lot bigger than his size. He gets a beat on this ball early. Get the football to your best players. If you want to make big plays, and look how he undercuts Chris Carter, 16, and Taji Allen. What a play by Ray Carruth. Scored a touchdown there. Leslie in for the extra point, which is good. And the Buffaloes finally get on the board, chopping Texas's lead to a tenuous three points. at home anywhere when you put a Breathe Right nasal strip on a stuffy nose? The drug-free strip helps to lift and open blocked nasal passages so you can breathe through your nose again. Whoa. Breathe Right strips for nasal congestion, snoring, and easier breathing. Try to scare the Vikings Monday night. Texas now leading just by a score of 10 to 7. Ray Carruth, number 21, in the background there. The speedster out of Sacramento, California, hauling in that touchdown pass. Showing some good concentration. Carl Durrell said something interesting about him. Carl's the offensive coordinator, and he said, after the first game of this year, I told Ray, hey, relax and have fun enjoy playing football and he said since that point Ray Carruth has improved every single game he's coming off back-to-back 100 yard receiving games and I just think he is an exceptional football player 4-3 speed he can do it all back deep for Texas this is Westbrook gonna take it out two yards deep running across the field Westbrook ran about 45 yards and makes it out to the 22 where he's brought down by James Kidd. The unpredictability of Coy Detmer. Drops back, nobody's open, he scans the field. Ah, uh, let me just throw it this way and see what happens. Then he looks, he looks. Caruth, of course, makes the great reception, and I think he looks over and tries to catch New Heisel's eye and gets it there. Hey, Coach, what do you think, man? It worked. Yeah, that's just how you drew it up, right, Coach? the unshaven Coy Detmer. You know, to me, he captures the essence of college football. Just out there having a lot of fun. Now his youthful exuberance is really unbridled. 
First and 10, 11 and a half minutes to play in the first half. James Brown's turn now. The screen to Ricky Williams. It's a nice kickoff block. And Williams has a first down at the 38-yard line, where he's tackled by Matt Russell, a pickup of 16 yards and a first down for Texas. Well, next Saturday, only the home of college football could pack this much action in one day. ABC with a doubleheader kicking off at noon Eastern. Number five, Nebraska at Oklahoma. That's where we'll be. Number 10, Michigan takes on Michigan State. Then regional action, Northwestern and Penn State. Washington at USC, Maryland, Clemson, and Baylor, Texas. Call your cable operator for the games available in your area. First and 10, Colorado blitzing. Williams breaks a tackle, keeps those legs churning, making it out to the 43-yard line. Yeah, I don't think Mike Phillips, number 91, has come across too many running backs with Ricky Williams' leg drive and the kind of things he could do. We know he gets about 69% of his yards after somebody makes contact. He's 8 for 40 today for 5-yard average. But uh, I got a feeling he's going to carry the load today. We could see him carrying the ball 20, 25, maybe 30 times if Texas can control this football offensively. Brown to pass. Throws behind Fitzgerald in the 45 incomplete. And it'll be third down and five now for Texas. James Brown now just getting back to his form of a little while ago. You know, Brown has misfired a couple of times today. Fitzgerald's working on the left side, and he comes across. Now, he keeps running, and that's in a zone pattern where Brown expects him to hook up once he clears that underneath coverage. That's where communication and recognition can help a quarterback. And he hands it off this time to Williams. Williams has the first down at the 49-yard line. Ricky Williams showing a bit of a speed that time, getting to the corner and getting the necessary yardage where he's pushed out of bounds by Barnes. And Jay Humphrey, number 67, his big offensive tackle, does a real nice job of getting two bumps on defenders, allowing Ricky Williams to pick up that first down. They call him Little Earl. There's a look at Humphrey. You know, you might recognize that name. His father, Tom, played for the Broncos some years ago. Well, he also played for the Chiefs, the Browns, and the Falcons. There's a lot of cities who might recognize that man. <laughs> Priest Holmes now, the lone back behind James Brown. They fake the counter. Brown looking for Adams, and he has it. Touchdown, Texas. That's why they called the playmaker. 50 yards and a Texas strike. Kind of the similarity what Coy Detmer did when he threw the touchdown pass to Ray Carruth. Up the lift, Marcus Washington in coverage actually gives up coverage. It looks like Adams quit on this play, but Adams did a good job of baiting Marcus Washington. He kind of slows up a little bit. See Washington look for the football, and then all of a sudden Adams accelerates, catches the ball, and scores a touchdown. Texas's all-time leading receiver from Arlington, Texas, Mike Adams. And now Phil Dawson with the extra point. Low snap, and they get it down. And the Texas Longhorns regain their 10-point lead, courtesy of the playmaker. Don't forget that we'll televise the inaugural Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship December 7th from St. Louis. Stay tuned during the next commercial for the Dr. Pepper Championship Challenge winning number and your chance to win a million dollars. Hey, the Econo Lodge Senior Room has just what older travelers want. Brighter lighting. Look, still soft and beautiful. Bigger numbers on the phone and TV remote. Time for fly fishing. And an in-room coffee maker. Spend a night, not a fortune, at Econo Lodge. Call 1-800-55-ECONO and you can save 30%. You drink about, just drink that. And you'd be surprised. Your eyes, you know, begin to... It's 
one of the most comfortable cars I've ever driven. People love talking about Ford Taurus. It's fun to drive. It really is. With Taurus, you fit in no matter what size you are. I'm big. I'm surprised by how much room there is inside it. Everybody in my family is big. Just turn the wheel a fraction of an inch. The car responds. There's a lot more room. It's designed so I don't have to search for anything. The seats feel like they wrap around you. It's a state-of-the-art car. Ford Taurus, the best-selling car in America, starting at 18545 This car is a pleasure to drive. I have fun. College football and ABC Sports brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And the Lennox Complete Heat System. Home heating plus virtually unlimited hot water from the company you trust. Texas leads Colorado 17-7 with 10.07 to play in the first half. Chris Stockton getting set to kick off for the Longhorns. Ryan Nunez and Marcus Stiggers back deep. And James Brown with that touchdown pass to 83. Mike Adams sets a school record with his 38th touchdown pass career. And Adams has caught a pass now in 20 consecutive games. Stockton pooches this one again. Fair catch called it to 29. Number 35, Keith Miller, the backup fullback, makes the catch. Let's look at the touchdown one more time. Mike Adams working against Marcus Johnson. He has a little stutter move here. Okay, right there. Now Adams slows down as if the play's over. Marcus Washington sneaks a peek, and that's what cost him as he turns around to look for the football. Michael Adams, I should mention now, is now one behind Lavelle Pinkney to be tied for all time in touchdown receptions at Texas. And there's James Brown. You know, both quarterbacks have used the common sense of going to their big play receivers to try and get big plays, and they got him so far in this game. This is Herschel Troutman. Herschel Troutman for Colorado brought down right near the line of scrimmage. Casey Hampton, number 64, is pumped up. Hampton, 6'1", 317. A lot of that 317 John located in the lower half of his body. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> yeah, they're, they're going to see a lot of playing out of him this year, but you can see Hampton trying to get this defense fired up. And when you talk about the confidence factor, Mark, Texas now starting to assert itself and showing some confidence during this game. Second down and nine now for Colorado. Two tight. And they run it as Troutman out to the 35. He'll be about five yards short of the first down. Third and five to go. Kyle Richardson making the tackle. Richardson, one of the linebacking crew. Troutman out of Naples, Florida. Averaging 4.7 yards per carry today. It's third down and four for Colorado. Time for Texas to really wrap up Colorado runners and receivers. On third and four. The quick slam complete. They wrap him up, make the tackle. And the officials are going to rule that he was already down. And now they're going to rule it's an incompletion. So Colorado will have to punt. That looked like a sight adjustment, a blitz play by the defense. Brody Hefner slants in. He reads this play. Let's see if he holds on to the football. I'll tell you what, that looks like he, it looks like he had possession and then it would be a fumble. Yep on that play instead of an incompletion. It looked like he had that possession of the football. Rick Neuheisel, no doubt arguing that he made the catch and was already down. All for naught, though. It is fourth down and five to go. Nick Peach set to punt. And that's Mike Adams standing at his own 17-yard line. Mike Adams already with a touchdown catch today and already with one long punt return. Longhorns have blocked five punts this year, but Peach gets off a great one. Adams to return it. Adams falls down and slips at the 25. Well, oh, there's a penalty here. It looks like roughing. There's somebody took a cheap shot and hit the punter. Nick Peach goes down on the ground. Beach, a walk on true freshman. I think it was Derek Lewis. Dead ball, personal foul, receiving team. Derek Lewis, I believe number 82. You know, a lot of times you, you like to sort of sit around and see if you can get a shot on the punter. Look at Peach now, he's going downfield. 
And let's see Lewis. Yeah, comes out of nowhere and lights him up. And he's hurting on that play. Now, the question is, I mean, he hit him in front. And Makovic is telling what a stupid play that was. Cost him some valuable yardage. Sure did. I don't know what, what Neuheisel is trying to get. Peach probably looking out of his ear hole after that hit. Yeah, that's when you go back and you, you wonder why you do this. And Peach, of course, is playing to try and get a scholarship this year. He took over the starting duties of Hunter, grew up in Seattle, Washington, and offered his parents to pay his own way. They put up 10 grand, he put up the rest. Neuheisel said, you punt the rest of the year and you'll get a scholarship. Hoping to cash in on that offer. James Brown with the ball at the 12. Flag down, Ricky Williams runs it out to the 15. But Lennon litters the field. Dickey and Phillips making the tackle that time for Colorado. That might be an illegal formation. The flags came from both sides. Offense. Got to have seven men on the line of scrimmage in college. You can have an uncovered tackle. You can't have that in the pros, but you have to have seven guys up there. How do you get one of those? I hope that thing comes off. <laughs> Where can I get a hair cut like that, huh? Offense. Not enough guys on a line. Five-yard penalty. You know, as we take a look at uh, James Brown and think about number five, the quarterback for Texas. There he is on first and 15. He's playing fairly well so far, and some people thought, John, that we might see his understudy, Richard Walton, at some point here during the second quarter. A look at his numbers so far. 106 yards passing and two touchdown passes as well. A vociferous crowd right now at Folsom Field. Brown runs it and steps out of bounds at the eight-yard line. Matt Russell there to push him out. Russell, the Buckus candidate, forcing out the quarterback. Russell loves to chase down quarterbacks. He was thrown out of the spring game this year for hitting the quarterback. You know, they have a rule you can't hit the quarterback. He lit up John Hessler on the first play of spring game and got thrown out of a scrimmage. Just so happens that Hessler is his roommate, too. <laughs> so <laughs> he certainly doesn't care who it is. He well, loves to chase down quarterbacks. That's a little fight between friends. Second down and 15. Texas leading 17 to 7 with 8.18 to play in the first half. Ricky Williams tiptoeing, running east-west and brought down at the nine-yard line by Ron Merkerson, number 33 for the Buffaloes. Merkerson, a reliable linebacker. He'll play most of the game. And they will often match him with the tight end. He's a good runner. He has really improved his play. What he did a good job of doing was forcing Williams back inside. Merkerson, number 33. Right up here, you'll see him flash upfield and force Williams to cut it back where he can't get anything on this football play. Comes out of a stacked position, and that's good defensive scheme. You know, you line up inside, then you flash outside. He's stunning with his defensive end there. And during that play, there was another penalty against Texas. They've had three penalties in four plays. Personal foul, illegal procedure, and holding on this play. So they're doing their version of uh, destructive offense right now. They're holding on to a lead has been tough for Texas recently. They lead by 10 here, third and 14. Little Earl brought down behind the line of scrimmage. A swarming Buffalo herd. Led by Billy Mau Mau and Greg Jones. And the Longhorns will have to punt out of the shadows of their own goalposts. It's fourth down and 15. Mark Schultes into punt. Punting into a very strong wind. Steve Rosgill standing at midfield for the Buffaloes. Schultes gets off a great kick into the wind. That's an outstanding kick. Rosgill with a nice return. 
pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line. A 51-yard punt. Brasco with a 14-yard return pushed out by Aaron Bambino. The Longhorns leading by 10 when we come back. This is Ford Escort. Did you know that it's new? If you knew that it's new, did you know the wagon's new too? The engine is new, the suspension improved. A safety cell protects but stays out of view. It's quieter inside to shush out the out. But for those who simply must twist and shout, there's premium speakers on a new stereo. So you can get every note and get it to go. This Escort is great. This Escort is nice. This Escort has a very sensible price. So why not check out the newest Escort this season? We've given you every rhyme and rhymed every reason. The University of Texas at Austin, a place that towers in the memory, transforming lives from the very beginning. Classic, timeless, always excellent, always competitive. The University of Texas at Austin, top-ranked degree programs, cutting-edge technology, a community of scholars, working to stay a dream ahead, towering in strength and pride. The University of Texas at Austin. Hello, I'm John Beekner, president of the University of Colorado. You know, it's easy to get the big picture from up here. But here, in the daily life of a university, we face new realities in higher education. Our classrooms can no longer be bounded by walls. Classrooms of the future must extend from cyberspace to the daily challenges of our communities, and from deep space to the inner reaches of each mind. It's a total learning environment. It's the University of Colorado. Well, after that Oklahoma loss by Texas, some scathing remarks coming from within, i.e. Earl Campbell, former Texas Heisman Trophy winner, had that to say. Kind of sad to be that far ahead, but I will say this about John Blake, the coach of Oklahoma. They were more prepared, he says. He said nothing, take nothing away from them. And he went on to add that he felt that the Oklahoma players were hungrier than the Texas players in that loss. And he also pointed out that Colorado was going to be a critical game this season. And so far, Texas is playing with renewed enthusiasm. They talked about a fresh start. See the second paragraph. I think the key is going to be Colorado. They lose that game, and I think it's going to wash it all out. And John Makovic echoed those very sentiments when he told us yesterday that it's a new season for us. It's a new beginning. We're looking at this as the second half of our Big 12 season. Second down and 14 for Colorado. Denver has all day and finds the tall, lanky, rangy receiver, Chris Anderson, complete at the 40-yard line. Let's go back to John Saunders in New York. Mark, another good one between Florida State and Virginia. Second and eight on the 16th. Thad Busby's hit by Travis Griffith. It's recovered by Todd White. Two plays later, Aaron Brook plunges in and ties the game at 14 apiece. That's where they stand. Last year, Virginia got this victory. We'll keep you up to date. Mark. Well, the Seminoles in a ball game. Right here, Texas leading by 10 with 5.51 remaining in the first half. Detmer to pass on third and four. Incomplete for Troutman. A catchable ball, no doubt. Chris Carter defending on the play. Hit him right in the hands. And you can hear the sellout crowd here at Folsom Field chanting, go. On fourth down and four. On the season, Colorado is two of six on fourth down conversions. And they're gonna go for the first down. Yeah, New Heisel wants to get the conversion here. He had the right play drawn up. Troutman had a mismatch. They did not account for him defensively. But he dropped the football. Texas coming with a blitz. On the slant, Anderson has it. One man to beat. First down, Buffaloes at the 11-yard line. Taji Allen making the tackle on Chris Anderson. Again, they pull the right string and press the right button with the call. You know, a 20 yard pickup. Excuse me, Mark. Firstly, a quarterback has to read the blitz, but also if he can feel his way in the pocket, which Denver does so well, he sees the blitz. Watch him buy a little time to his left. They'll get himself a good throwing lane and completes the pass to Anderson. It makes it easier for the receiver to see it 
and it also allows him to get the football where he wants to. Detmer with a real good job reading and also moving on that play. And this is Lyndon Henry on first down, nimbly stepping over a couple of would-be tacklers down to the four-yard line. He was tackled by Chris Carter. Especially in this area, especially in this area, that's where Texas has to make sure to wrap up those Colorado runners. Henry running nine times today. There he is for a total of 46 yards with five minutes remaining in the first half. Oh, let's see Carruth. On the option. Lyndon Henry. Well, you know, that's a play similar to what Notre Dame did to score their touchdown against Texas when they came back in that football game. I saw Carruth in motion. I thought they were going to try and get the football to him. We may see that later on, but Carruth goes in motion to the right. Right there. Denver does a good job reading what he has to do, pitches the football as Humphrey closed in on him, and Henry takes the ball into the end zone. Leslie with the extra point. Henry capping that six-play, 45-yard drive, using up 224 on the clock. And, of course, the key play on that drive was that fourth down conversion to Anderson. It's now 17-14, Texas. Watch Detmer here. He reads the option, gets it out quickly. He's not that much of a threat to run the football, but enough so that he has to be respected by the defense. Henry takes it into the end zone and then takes a knee. And Dean Blevins, Chris Carter, couldn't haul down Henry on that play. No, he couldn't. A great call on the option down here. You know, you have a team that throws the football, and when they do so many things so well, they're able to run the option with a lot of effectiveness. Take a look here. The missed tackles for the day, four for the University of Texas. Of course, that has been their Achilles heel defensively. And today they played well, though. They're credited with two turnovers, except for that big play to Carruth and then the fourth down play there. They have played pretty solidly. And fairness to defensive coordinator Gary Darnell, who is up in the booth today. Texas defense giving up just 14 points against a very productive Colorado offense. Well, you know, I think as a coach, you know, he's taking a lot of heat, and I can understand that why in, in Austin, Texas. But as a coach, you, know, you try and get guys to line up and get in position. And I think by and large throughout the year, you have seen players in position. But the players on this defense have not made the plays. We talked about that in our opening today. Chris Carter doesn't make a play against James Allen. We see it here, you know, where he, plays aren't made. And, and that's really the problem that has played this. It doesn't come to coaching. It comes to players. I've never seen a coach make a tackle during a game. Jason Leslie kicking off. Not legally, anyway. Well, yeah. <laughs> if you've seen it, you got a scoop. <laughs> Sean Mitchell and Brian Westbrook back deep for Texas. The sun now peeking out from behind the clouds here in Boulder, Colorado, with 4.43 to play in the first half. Both teams sharing the lead in their respective divisions. And they pooch it, and they got a man to catch it, but it's a little bit over the head. Once again, the key play on that Colorado scoring drive was that fourth down conversion. Yeah, again, a sight adjustment. Anderson sight, uh, takes the ball on the blitz. You see the blitz, but watch Detmer just move to his left to buy a little bit of time, and then he delivers a perfect strike downfield. And that definitely kept that drive alive. A couple plays later, Anderson, or rather, uh, Lendon Henry scored a touchdown. Detmer took a hit after he threw it, too. You know, John, it's been interesting that we've seen some not so conventional things and orthodox things happen on the kickoff today. <laughs> yeah. Well, the guys have been pooching it up there. They've been trying to drive it deep. Trying to do some things with the wind. Yeah, I think they're, they're trying to move this kickoff return team around and get a cheap turnover. Crowd alive here in Boulder. Play fake on the flanker screen. Mike Adams upended in a big way at the 49 by Ryan Black. Wow. Black is a guy that defensive coordinator A.J. Kristoff calls a guided missile, and he looked like a scud on that one. Yeah, he's a guy who almost transferred to Arizona. He went out to the Aloha Bowl his freshman year. He was paying his own way, and he just couldn't stay here. He was a walk-on, 
When the plane landed in L.A., he was on his way to Arizona. McCartney called him on the plane and said, I'm giving you a scholarship. Stay here in Colorado. He is a coach's player, this guy. Sets up a second and one for Texas. Sean Mitchell running against the throw, has the first down at the 45-yard line. This is a big game for the Texas Longhorns, a pivotal game. They are looking for an epiphany of sorts, a good one. They you know, had two solid weeks of practice. And, and that pulled them together. You know, one thing I see with Texas, they have to keep the ball here with just under four minutes left in this game because Colorado offensively has a great two-minute offense. They've scored three out of four times this year, so you don't want to get the football back in Coy Detmer's hands. James Brown, seven for 15, having himself a pretty good game so far. Brown very much looking forward to this matchup. On the counter tray, Mitchell breaks a tackle and has another first down. Preparation, the essence of success, and James Brown had this to say about preparing for this game. We're focused and we're gonna try to win this game for real. Um, Coach Magrath said we're like a volcano ready to erupt, you know. So, and I feel that same way. So we're gonna come out and play ball. I'm gonna try to play the best game I played this year. Try to make things happen and move the ball, make first downs, and win the game. James Brown, very much a team player. As you look at his touchdown passes in the last three years, 19 a year ago. He's gonna have to pick it up to match that. First and 10. Colorado blitzing again on the slant, incomplete, no flag. Intended for number 86, Matt Davis. Broken up by another Davis, Torrey. It's a Davis thing. Torrey Elton Javis. Davis changed his name, wanted to go back to Torrey. And whenever he makes a play, they say Rick Neuheisel screams, hip, hip, Torrey. <laughs> Let's see where that volcano is that James Brown was referring to. It's up there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it is. I asked him if volcanoes can erupt if it snows. He said he wasn't sure. I don't see any burnt orange up on the hill, though. Brown almost falls. And an education in improvisation by James Brown makes something out of nothing down to the 22-yard line where he's run out of bounds. There's a minor explosion by Brown, picking up 12 yards. A six-foot junior, always exciting to watch. Well, we're adding excitement just simply to the drop back. Watch Brown, he just gets his two feet caught together. He might have got a caught with Dan Neal, his right guard. Now when he scoots out of bounds, when you have an athletic quarterback, bad things can turn into good things. And finally, Jarney takes him out of bounds, but not before James Brown gets a first down. James Brown couldn't throw in the spring because of a shoulder injury, but that injury has since healed. 336 to play in the first half. They run the counter to Sean Mitchell. Stop, and he put it on the ground. Colorado has it. Matt Russell recovers the loose ball. You know, you, you got to wonder what a great play by the Colorado defense. They come up with big plays in critical parts of the game. I'm not so sure that Sean Mitchell's forward progress was not stopped, though. Good point. Bucky Godbolt, the running backs coach, talking to Mitchell after that fumble. It's a counter tray play. Mitchell takes it on the delay. Ricky Williams is his lead blocker. There's number six, Ryan Black coming in, making the hit. Now watch how he stopped here, stopped here. Then the ball comes out. No, that's an accurate call. He was still moving a little bit. Russell right there to pounce on the opportunity. Always with a nose for the ball. Each team now with two turnovers. Troutman on first and 10 over the left side of the line. Gains about three where he's tackled by Aaron Humphrey. There's Russell. You know, I read an article actually. It was kind of interesting. His linebacker coach who is a Brian Cabral says that I treat him like my kids I have to put him in timeout every once in a while he said I'll watch practice and I'll see a group of guys and I'll see him there and he's uh, making everybody laugh and all of a sudden I have to go over to him and say go stand by yourself for a while he said it kills Russell when I make him do that but he said I'll make him stand by himself for 10 minutes in practice second down and five 
first down at the 31 yard line. Troutman with a nice run. And here's what I talked about the two minute offense for Colorado three for four so far this year two touchdowns and a field goal. They are very proficient at running this. And of course when you have a quarterback like Coy Detmer who just understands so many things offensively he could certainly make this offense go. Lendon Henry now in the ball game for Troutman. 238 to play in the first half Henry brought down to the 35 yard line. Gain of about four on the play. Gray Mosher making the tackle. Dean Blevins talked about some of the missed tackles that has plagued this team this year. And again, so far today we've seen five missed tackles. Troutman takes the football up through the middle of that Texas defense. Second down and six to go. Denver under pressure and sacked back at the 28-yard line by Mosher. No missed tackle there by Gray Mosher, was no, it? No, no, no. <laughs> Those quarterbacks are fun to wrap up. And Denver is slow to get up. I mean, they slammed him down like a domino that time. And Gray Mosher antagonizing that Folsom Field crowd. They call him Big Country. He's a rodeo competitor. And I think right there, he used the old lasso as that pocket broke down. Denver goes back into the middle. Mosier gets him, and let's see if he throws it. Oh, he body slams him. Oh, boy. That, that's bad. That's a bulldog. John Hessler is the backup quarterback for Colorado. He wears number seven. One yeah, he, more look at Detmer's. Watch his head hit the turf here. Oh, my goodness. That's Detmer's, hard. Yeah, he's still on the turf, too. You know, that AstroTurf is hard. When you get hit, and you bounce like that. I just wonder. Boy, right there is still on the ground, still being attended to. But I certainly think that, uh, you know, right now, he may just be feeling a little bit woozy. While we wait for a report and look at Gray Mosher, let's check in with some other programming on ABC. In Hour of America's Funniest Videos, teams up with a new Hour of Coach for America's Funniest Saturday Night. Catch new Funniest Videos on Special Night and Time, 8, 7 Central. Then, it's the biggest decision of their lives. Who will be the guardian of their baby? How the heck did we end up with no family and such useless friends? An all-new Hour of Coach, after videos, ABC Saturday. Sunday, the biggest mistake of Lois Lane's life. I think you better come with us. A special all-new Lois and Clark, ABC Sunday. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96, all the day's scores and highlights. Number two, Ohio State in action, as is number three, Florida State. Todd Blackledge standing by with our crack staff, headed up by Brian Hyland. They'll bring you all the important facts, all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96. Third and 12 for the Colorado Buffaloes. Their starting quarterback, Coy Detmer, is still on the AstroTurf, apparently injured. Here's what happened just moments ago for those of you who just joined us. Gray Mosher of Texas slamming Detmer to the turf in a big way. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins. Guys, Rick Neuheisel has been all over the officials here. Now you see Detmer coming off. I believe it's a, some type of a head injury. His head really slammed down, obviously not a knee. But Neuheisel has been all over the official about being in the grasp and he brought his center over, backup center Reed, to take snaps or to give snaps to Hessler so they wouldn't have a fumbled exchange here because oftentimes that is a concern. We'll keep an eye on Depp before you get right back to you. And there's a look at Mosher by the tackle just moments ago, the sack on Detmer. The new man at the helm now is John Hessler, just one of four on the season. He's played in just three games. It's third and 12. Well, you know, he came in last year in that Texas A&M game. That's when Detmer got hurt, had that torn ACL injury. And all he did was set 12 school records in passing. So Hessler, with a baseball background. We have a sideline warning on Colorado. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, you know that's Rick Neuheisel getting after the officials. So they give a warning to that sideline. But going back to Hessler, he had 20 touchdown passes thrown last year. Yeah, he's used to being a relief man, and he's done a good job at it. There's Detmer leaving the field. 
Denver about to leave the field. Hessler get a pass on his first play. Now he decides to run. He won't get the first, and he is hit hard. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins. Guys, we were just a few feet away from Detmer a moment ago, and he was obviously very shaken up and woozy. I'm sure he has a headache right now, but the trainers have told me that he was knocked out. They're taking him inside for observation, and we'll get a report back to you from the halftime locker room as to if he will be able to return for the second half. Knocked out, though. Well, that's a serious situation. Well, you saw that head bounce on the turf. I, I, I would seriously doubt if we'll see Coy Detmer for the rest of the afternoon. Concussions are something you have to be so careful about. Peach into punt. Mike Adams standing on his own 16-yard line. Texas leading with 52 seconds to play in the first half. They lead by three. Longhorns have blocked five punts this year. They don't get to this one. Adams calling for the fair catch at the 24. And Texas with 41 seconds to play in the first half with a shot to at least get into field goal range. Well, Thursday evening on ABC, Ekaterina Gordeva and Rudy Galindo compete in their first pro single skating event. They join Christy Yamaguchi, Katarina Witt, and Dorothy Hamill in the prestigious U.S. Pro Figure Skating Championships. That's Thursday evening at 9 Eastern here on ABC. And just moments ago, Coy Detmer, the starting quarterback for Colorado, slammed to the turf by Gray Mosher, suffering a head injury. Oh, boy. And Gray Mosher now is 6'5", 270, when he takes his body and whips Coy Detmer around him, the centrifugal force that's created is all right there on poor Detmer's right side of his head. That's James, horrible. James Brown, meanwhile, John, completing the pass out to the 31-yard line, a gain of about six on the play, stopping the clock with 36 seconds to play in the first half. Texas coming into this game with a record of 3-3 three and three overall, 2-1 and one in the conference. They haven't played in two weeks, and James Brown and his crew have had two good weeks of practice. Two weeks to recover from that Oklahoma loss. Second down and three. Brown incomplete. Intended for number 80, Dustin Armstrong. Broken up by Dalton Simmons. Stops the clock with 32 seconds to play in the half. Texas with all three of its timeouts remaining. It's third down and three. The ball at the 31-yard line. Phil Dawson has a strong leg. He'd be kicking into the wind if they get into field goal range. Two tights, two wides, and it's Ricky Williams on the handoff. And he'll be short of the first down by about three yards. Tackled by Matt Russell, number 16, who recovered a fumble for Colorado just moments ago. It'll be fourth down and short for Texas. Boy, they're getting after it in the interior line. There was a little bit of a fight going on there at the end of that play. I think things uh, on both sides of the football, the intensity is going to be turned up here. And there's a guy, number 16, who's a picture of intensity, Matt Russell. For the Colorado Buffaloes, he says that he read Brian Bosworth's autobiography and was surprised at how similar he was to the boss. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> Said he used to wear his hair like the boss anyway. He says that if he could title his own autobiography, it would be called Fat and Nasty. Favorite meal is meat, potatoes, vegetables, greens, and anything else that probably isn't moving on his plate. <laughs> 25 seconds to play in the first half. Texas leading by a field goal, 17 to 14. But the big story so far, both teams with a couple of turnovers, both quarterbacks sloppy with the ball. Coy Detmer has thrown two interceptions, and right now he is in the Colorado locker room. A sold-out Folsom Field this Saturday afternoon in Boulder. Fourth down. And Mark Schultz to punt for Texas. Steve Rosga standing on his own 25. A high end over end punt, a fair catch called in the 30 by Rosga. They have 19 seconds to perhaps get into field goal range after that 37 yard punt. Look at the top 25 today. Ohio State leading against Iowa. 
in a game on ABC Florida State losing against Virginia that'd be two years in a row if Virginia could hang on that they that's, would defeat Florida State yeah that's the only loss Bobby Bowden has in the ACC against Virginia last year in Northwestern Boy Back at Folsom Field on a cool Saturday afternoon, Texas leading Colorado by a score of 17 to 14. I'm Mark Jones along with John Spagnola. Dean Blevins down on the sidelines. We're at halftime about to begin the third quarter. This was supposed to be a game, John, of renewal and rejuvenation for Texas. It started off that way, getting on the board early. Yeah, they got up 10 nothing early in this football game, and they played steady football throughout the uh, course of the afternoon. Colorado, of course, took the... Uh, Football back here, they're behind 10-0. Ray Carruth goes up inside of two Texas defenders. Get the football to your best player. That's something you should do. Coy Detmer gets the football to Carruth, and he converts. It gets Colorado in the game. Things were looking bad there for a while. Speaking of getting the ball to your best player, Mike Adams, a 50-yard touchdown pass from James Brown, who improvised on this play. Similar-looking play, too. Yeah, Adams working on Washington. You saw Washington take a look back for the football. And, of course, that's when Adams was able to sneak away and get into the end zone. And here's the key play of the first half. Starting quarterback, Coy Detmer, injured, slammed to the turf by Gray Mosher of Texas. He suffered a concussion, left the game, into the locker room, and our Dean Blevin spoke with Rick Neuheisel at halftime. Rick, wild, wild first half. Certainly the injury to Coy, though, is the thing that stands out. You were on the, the officials quite a bit. Well, he, he was in the grass. They've blown the whistle, and then he gets a concussion because he slammed to the ground. I think that's the official the referee's job to make that call. But, you know, he, it's a hard job to be out there as an official. I don't fault him. What, cha what changes do you make at half? Because there have been the penalties and the turnovers, although you have made the big plays. Changes, though. Well, we got off to an atrocious start. We turned the ball over a couple of times. We had a big punt return against us. So I think we've rallied from that. Now we just got to calm down, go back to what we were doing, and I think we'll be okay in the second half. It's too bad we didn't catch that field goal. Thanks, Coach. All right. And there's a look at John Hessler, number seven. The spotlight falling squarely on his shoulders in the second half of play now as he becomes the quarterback. There's a look at the halftime statistics. Colorado, 284 total yards to 196 for Texas. But Colorado trailing on the scoreboard. Each team with two turnovers in the first half. Chris Stockton kicking off for Texas to Ryan Nunez. And Marcus Stiggers for Colorado. The Longhorns coming into this game, 10-point underdogs. Losing three of their last four games. Fair catch called at the 19-yard line by Stiggers, and that's where they'll start. Hessler, as I mentioned earlier, has played in just three games this year. And he is one of four on the season. Well, you know, Neuheisel mentioned that in the grass. You know, that's a professional rule when a quarterback is in the grass. That doesn't exist in college, but his point is well taken, and that's clearly Mosier had a sack. The play was pretty much over, and he body slammed Coy Detmer and knocked him out of this football game. But the referee did not throw a flag, did not see it as anything that was unnecessary roughness. First down and 10, Hessler at the helm, Troutman running it off tackle out to the 21 yard line and for more on Detmer let's go downstairs to Dean well guys my assistant today was a former Colorado player and knows Coy Detmer well and he was in the locker room talked to him at halftime and he says that Detmer is feeling okay he says he will not play the concussion keeps him out he was out for a few seconds he'll come out and be on the sideline John Magovic told me a few minutes ago that he won't change his game plan defensively John Hessler knows this offense and runs it well. He said, though, that Texas will run the ball right at Colorado. That's the one change that they will make here in the second half. All right, Dean, and they certainly have the horses to do that in Ricky Williams and Sean Mitchell. Hessler passing, completes his first pass for the first down out to the 34-yard line to Brody Hefner, the tight end, brought down by Trey Thomas. Denver now relegated to the role of spectator and cheerleader, a pick of a 14. Look at the first half possessions for Colorado. A couple of interceptions thrown by Detmer. And they ended that first half on a missed field goal. Yeah, the interceptions and the one punt return is what got Texas going in this football game early. But then they came back, played pretty well. And you got to be impressed with Hessler so far. He's thrown strikes in the two opportunities he's had so far in this game. First down to the 35 for the Buffaloes. Troutman running.
running between the tackles out to the 38-yard line, tackled by Casey Hampton, number 64. Hampton filling in at nose guard for number 96, Chris Akins. And he's 24-2-1 when leading at the half. So Makovic, especially this football team, plays real well in the third quarters. But as Dean has mentioned and others today, including ourselves, the, this team has not played well in the fourth quarter in some of their big games this year. They had 10-point lead against Notre Dame and squandered it, an 11-point game against Oklahoma and lost in the last play of both of those football games. Second down and six, John. Colorado, not a great second-half team offensively, though. Hessler going up top with the roof. And even a guy who runs a 4.240 can't get to that one. Incomplete. Brian Westbrook on the coverage along with Trey Thomas. Well, you got a sense of the arm strength of John Hessler, though. I mean, he stands tall in the pocket, doesn't move around a whole lot, but he just flicks this football. Takes a good hit afterwards, but that ball goes about 50 yards into the wind with not a whole lot of effort on his part. Hessler again filling in for Detmer. Detmer watching pensively on the sidelines. Third and six. Intended for Savoy, who went high but couldn't corral it. And Colorado will have to punt. Westbrook again on the coverage. Westbrook, one of the top cornerbacks in the entire country. Number 30, the top cover guy on the squad. Makovic calls him one of the best he's ever seen and coached. And he's coached some good ones. He had Henry Jones when he was coaching at Illinois. I was reading a publication about Westbrook. They rated him one of the top five players who are going to come into the draft this year. So that's pretty heady stuff for that cornerback. Peach punting to Adams. Adams calls for the fair catch. Goes over his head. And this will... Where is it going to be down? They're going to mark it at the one-yard line. I think they're taking it out to the 20. Now, uh, yep. You know, I mean, here's where if the players just get out of the way, the ball had enough English on it where they could just, just leave the football alone. Look how it's bouncing back in the other direction, and then it gets knocked into the end zone right there. And that's unfortunate. That was number 40, Rashidi Barnes, who knocked the ball into the end zone. No need for that whatsoever. Nope. But yep. it's so hard to tell these kids just to cool their aggressiveness in that situation. So it does indeed come out to the 20-yard line. 13.07 to play in the third quarter. James Brown now with his turn. 8 of 18 in the first half. Fitzgerald in motion. Dumps it off to his tight end. That's Derek Lewis. Who runs it out to the 27-yard line. Gains about second. Brought down by Ron Merkerson. Lewis, tight end, plays behind Fitzgerald. Very quick, and a guy who the coaches say is improving week to week. Hey, he's one of the strongest, or the strongest of the tight ends. Only a sophomore. He's going to develop into quite a talent before his career is over here in Texas. Down second down and two, three wideouts for the Longhorns. Ricky Williams has the first down out to the 31-yard line, and that's what John Makovic told Dean Blevins, that they would try and run the ball a little more here in the second half. Billy Mau Mau making the tackle along with Matt Russell on the play. And it's a first down for the Longhorns. And Texas Tech defeating Texas A&M. we got to look at the Raiders last week, and... They played competitively with Nebraska for about three and a half quarters. On the draw, Williams lunging forward to the 36-yard line. He'll have about four on first down. Tackled by Mau Mau again. Williams, just in case you were wondering, has a Mighty Mouse tattoo on his bicep, but runs anything like a mouse. Much more authoritative. He's running right behind his All-American right guard, Dan Neal. We have two of the top guards in the country right here, Chris Naoli and Dan Neal, both playing that right guard position. It is second down and six. Little waggle action. 
Brown wide open. Williams slipped, and he had open real estate ahead of him had he not fallen. Williams falls down at the 37. You know, this is the Longhorns' first game on AstroTurf this year, and it gets a little bit slick when it gets a little colder. He's got his feet spatted up. That's when you tape the bottom of those feet. And sometimes you don't always get the best traction because you lose some of that surface area on the bottom of the sole of your foot or the sole of your shoe. Third down and six. Passing situation for Texas. Dan Neal, one of those guys trying to protect the quarterback. Brown has time, but he fires incomplete. Intended for Armstrong. And it's fourth down. Mark Schultes will come into punt for the Longhorns. Schultes punting just twice so far today. And Ryan Nunez is back standing on his 24-yard line for Colorado. Colorado coming after this one. Schultes gets off a high punt. Brought down at the 26 with a fair catch. A 39-yard punt, nothing on the return. Bryant Westbrook says, hey, how you like me now? I got much heart. I heard someone say, what will they think of next? And I thought, how wonderful it is to imagine that someone is out there thinking of things. And that's their job, to think of something that no one has ever thought of. And all we have to do is wait and wonder, what will they think of next? The Chrysler Cirrus, Concorde, and LHS, bringing what's next from the cab forward engineering of Chrysler. Their goals are as basic as a first home, an education, a secure retirement. Yet they own over half of all the stock in America. They are individual investors, and for them, nothing is more valuable than information. Today, NASDAQ is delivering news about companies, performance tracking, even tiny stock quotes, instantly. So if you're an investor who seeks vital information, you now know where to find it. Katarina Gordieva and Rudy Galindo make their pro singles debut in the first ever U.S. Pro Figure Skating Championships, Halloween night on ABC. A look at the Colorado campus here nestled among the hills, the Rocky Mountains. Elevation about 5,200 feet. Try going for a run on campus. It'll burn your lungs if you're not used to the altitude. I speak from experience. 10.35 to play in the third quarter. First and 10 for the Buffaloes with the ball at the 26-yard line. Troutman, the lone back. Hessler fires complete at the 40-yard line. A first down, a pickup of 14. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins. Guys, the Longhorns have Chris Akins, their big and very talented nose guard, out right now with an injured arch. This guy's got some weight. You can imagine how much pressure there is on that arch. They're taping it up. His hip, by the way, is better than expected and he didn't think he'd be able to or the coaches didn't think he'd be able to play very much but uh, he did in the first half you know he missed the second half of the Oklahoma game with that hip injury and that's one of the reasons Texas did not play well defensively that's a good point Dean we were at that game we did that game and they could have used him in the late going 10 12 to play in the third quarter two tight ends for Colorado and here's the end around Karut got a block flag down Karut down at the 45 this one could come back. Well, Will Goodlow, the freshman defensive end, came flashing in there and forced Carruth to take a much deeper path than he intended to. Now, 
Number 52, Kyle Smith. May have been the culprit on this play. Smith with a clip right there on the left of your screen. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. Mark, we told you Virginia had a three-point lead at halftime over Florida State. Following an interception, Thad Busby with a nice pass, but watch the grab by E.G. Green. Outstretched, has it, and Florida State has regained the lead. Now 21-17. Mark. John E.G. Green might stand for extremely good on that last reception. 10-02 remaining in the third quarter here. Texas leading by a field goal. Trying to snap that four-game losing streak against the Buffaloes. First and 21 after that clip. Hessler has time. Fires incomplete. No flag. And now late flags on cue. Those were late flags. I mean, they came tomorrow. And another one. Another one for good measure. <laughs> Hefner was the intended receiver, and Trey Thomas was on him like white on rice. I'm telling you. Well, Brody Hefner came in across the middle. Look at Neuheisel's reaction. Yeah, he wants the flag. Probably called for it even sooner than you did, Mark. <laughs> Colorado, one of the most penalized teams in college football. That time, the beneficiary of the penalty. If you just joined us, Corey Detmer will not play the rest of the way. He was knocked out in the second quarter via concussion when he was tackled. Play fake, Kessler. Downfield for Anderson, and he overthrows him. Westbrook says, not in my house. Thank you very much. Bryant Westbrook, number 30, on the coverage. Kessler now 3 of 7 for 62 yards. And there's a look at the All-American candidate, Bryant Westbrook. And Gray Mosier again in on the quarterback, number 95. See him right there on your screen. Doesn't really buy the action. And watch him get a beat on Hessel. He's going for his second quarterback of the day. <laughs> He's the man wearing the black hat now, if you're a Colorado fan. Yeah, He's that's the right. villain. They're rolling these defensive linemen through. There's three freshman defensive linemen in the game right now. Ace formation, and they run out of it. Here's Trotman. And good run support that time by the safety Chris Carter the free safety number 16 with good support the biochemistry major with some good chemistry on that play and he has an opportunity to become the all-time leading interceptor in Texas history out of Tyler Texas there's someone else out of Tyler that played in Texas wasn't there John who might have been <laughs> that name Earl Earl Third down and eight. Hessler to pass. Has Savoy for the first down at the 42-yard line on the quick slam. Much to the approval of the leading man, now on the sideline, Coy Detmer. Keep an eye on Coy Detmer. You know, he's so unpredictable. He may run on the field and put a helmet on before this thing's over. No doubt. Bill Savoy. Get John Hessler standing tall in the pocket. Real strong arm. Good job getting the ball to Phil Savoy, who has a little habit of catching the ball against his pads. But Coy Denver likes what he sees. I don't know if he'll remember it tomorrow, though. Yeah, with that concussion, sometimes it doesn't stick. Henry. Hessler brought down on the blitz. They blitzed off the corner. The linebacker blitz with Matt Jones. That was another one of those body slam deals that we've seen today. Matt Jones taking a page from Gray Mosier's uh, sacking habits. It'll be second down and 13 after this sack. Number 42, Matt Jones, again off the play action, and he just comes completely unblocked out the outside, and he tries to do basically the same thing that Gray Mosier did. You know, John Makovic talked about having to put more pressure on Colorado today via the blitz, and John, so far, it seems as if they've done a good job of doing it. They have, and they're not respecting the play action right now because Colorado's not been running the football effectively here in the second half. Hessler on the screen, and it's complete to Troutman at the 47-yard line. He may have lost a yard or two. 
football, nothing but a man's game. Yeah, it sure is. You know, you know, one of the things, Hessler obviously does not get the amount of repetitions in practice that Coy Detmer with. Those kind of plays take a lot of timing. Those kind of plays you need a lot of repetitions on where you have to thread the ball around and set up a screenplay. Throws downfield sometimes are easier to do than those kind of screen passes and things like that. John, third down and 17. Carter, another tough hitter. He'll lay people out. During the course of this series between these two teams, many a player has taken a hard hit. More than just players. Hessler took a hit after he released it. Incomplete intended for Anderson, and it's fourth down. Carter in on the coverage. Seven ten remaining in the third quarter as Hessler walks to the sidelines. Get some advice from Rick Neuheisel, a former quarterback. Peach into punt with a healthy average today. And Mike Adams back at his own 10. Let's see if Peach keeps his head on the swivel. Remember, he was hit pretty hard in the second quarter of this football game. Texas very adept at blocking punts. They don't get to this one. Adams calls for the fair catch and lets it go over his head. And a great effort that time by Nunez, but he couldn't get it out. A 47-yard punt, and Texas will have to start at its own 20-yard line. Give him an A for effort. We'll be right back. You don't need fins to swim under it. You don't need wings to fly over it. You don't need four legs to run through it. But you just might need to bring this. Because Reef Watch Air Tours, Wild Track Jeep Safaris, and Pro Sail Schooners will take you on the ride of your life. But they won't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. What happens when you don't just make something? You invent something. The Chrysler Cirrus LXI. Now receive $1,000 cash back. The Chrysler Cirrus. The difference between just making something and inventing something. Welcome back to Boulder, Texas, on top of Colorado, 17-14. It's really the collision bowl as early, earlier in the ball game, down goes Coy Detmer with a concussion. He is out of the ball game, so in enters John Hessler. He goes colliding to the turf. He's okay, but guys, it was two years ago that John Makovic was in on the act. Cordell Stewart goes out of bounds. Tony Brackens comes right into John Makovic, and we'll see it again in slow mo motion. This was a severe blow to Makovic, who suffered post-concussion syndrome, and he was seriously in a fog for about a month and is okay now, but that was a serious problem. Critical game for him today. Well, at least you can say that Coach Makovic has a pretty good chin. He took a shot. Here's Ricky Williams taking a shot and falling down at the 21-yard line. Back to New York and John Saunders with an update on Florida State. Well, Mark, as you know, Florida State had taken the lead and looking for more points. Hubert Williams gets hit there and then later coughs the football up. Rondi Barber recovers in the end zone. A nice day for the Barber brothers. Rondi with that play. Tiki is over 100 yards. Florida State still leading 21-17. Mark. Man, I've heard Barber often so mentioned so often, I feel like I should be getting a haircut. <laughs> 6.20 to play in the third quarter. Brown to pass on the out pattern. Incomplete intended for Adams. Both officials convincingly saying no. And it'll be third down and nine. 41. 
We'll see if Adams gets his left foot down as he starts to head toward the sideline. Ball's not quite there, so right now, yeah, that left foot's on the paint. Definitely out of bounds, an accurate call. Good call by our officials today. Ball to 21, third and nine. Time to bring the noise from Boulder, and here it comes. Adams split wide to the top of your screen. Three receivers on this play. Complete to Fitzgerald, the tight end, who lunges forward to the 29, but he's short of the first down. Rashidi Barnes making the stop. And it's fourth down and one for Texas. And in comes the punting unit. Yeah, you can't take any chances as this part of the football field. And certainly with a backup quarterback, you have to assume, at least John Makovic does, that uh, Colorado could make some mistakes offensively yet. Schultz punting to that man, Nunez. Schultz gets off a high punt which comes down to the 34. Nunez calling for the fair catch. A 37-yard punt and nothing on the return with 5.18 to play in the third quarter. Texas leads 17 to 14 over Colorado. Next Saturday, a double dip on ABC beginning at 12 noon Eastern time. Nebraska number five against Oklahoma. Number 10, Michigan taking on Michigan State who defeated Wisconsin today. And then the second half regional action featuring Northwestern Penn State, Washington USC, Maryland Clemson, and Baylor at Texas. Don't forget to call your cable operator for the games available on pay-per-view. 5.18 to play in the third quarter. John Hessler in for his third series of the second half. A little confusion on the Colorado side of the field, and they call a timeout. But uh, that's too bad. I mean, that shouldn't happen in the first play of a series, Mark. So they'll think about it. So will the coach, and so will we. We'll be right back. I heard someone say, what will they think of next? And I thought, how wonderful it is to imagine that someone is out there thinking of things. And that's their job, to think of something that no one has ever thought of. And all we have to do is wait and wonder, what will they think of next? The Chrysler Cirrus, Concorde, and LHS, bringing what's next from the cab forward engineering of Chrysler. There are lots of reasons to buy life insurance. Here are two great ones. I'm State Farm Agent Mike Foy. As the Goff family has grown, so have their life insurance needs. That's why we get together for family insurance checkups. I make sure to explain all the options, then they decide on the plan that's right for them. Ask your State Farm agent for a family insurance checkup. It's a great way to learn about life. In an age of streamlining and downsizing, Chili still makes its big mouth burgers by hand, one at a time by a person. What this lacks in efficiency is more than made up for in taste. Chili's big mouth burgers, monuments of inefficiency. Play football at Chili's this season. In every restaurant, you can win two round trip tickets on Southwest Airlines to anywhere they fly. A football or Chili's big mouth burgers, all just for playing. Look at some of the quasars and shining stars so far this afternoon in Boulder, Colorado from the first half. Texas leads Colorado 17 to 14. And this is a showdown of two teams leading their respective divisions in the Big 12 Conference. First and 10 for Colorado from the 33. Hessler to pass on the out pattern. Complete to Ray Carruth at the 47-yard line. College football at ABC Sports brought to you by Chrysler, exploring the new frontiers of automotive technology. What's new in your world? And Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. I'm Mark Jones, along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins, 5-12 remaining 
in the third quarter, and Texas leads Colorado by three points. Boyd Detmer has been knocked out of the game because of a concussion, and this is Lyndon Henry, who got rocked at the 46. Tough sledding running between the tackles, John Spagnuolo. Sure was. Running behind his All-American right guard, Chris Nioli. Henry coming off the field. Looks like he got banged up on that play. But I have to credit this Texas defensive front. They're taking it to Colorado. Naoli does a good job of coming off and gets a good push on the defensive lineman. That was Gray Mosier. He pushed aside. But the rest of those Texas Longhorns were in there, and there were no missed tackles on that play. And Chris Aikens, John, back in the ballgame for the Longhorns now. Has to go to pass. Over the middle, wide open at the 33. The tight end, Brody Hefner, the freshman. Coaches say he's a little bit light right now. But as a pass receiver, in third down situations, he has been dependable. A pickup of 14 on that play. Well, he came into this game with just six receptions. He's had several today. Three, as a matter of fact, so he's increased his output by 50 percent and you can see where he's a vital part of this offensive game plan Hessler doing a good job of finding Hefner and here's Trotman cutting back against the grain Herschel Trotman down to the 20 and another Buffalo first down a pickup of 12. Herschel Troutman who missed their game two weeks ago because of a suspension in phone gate as they call it around here he's now run 15 times after that one for a total of 66 yards. Colorado putting himself a pretty good drive together here. So far, they've been sputtering. They started this drive with a timeout, but they look very impressive right now. Here's Troutman again, tackled at the 17-yard line by Aaron Humphrey, number 49. Just 18 years old, Humphrey, from Lubbock, Texas, a true freshman telling us that his favorite song is ACDC's you shook me all night long well that time he shook Troutman a little bit you know I see the intensity of this football game increasing dramatically in the second half it's a big 12 contest and these two teams are really going at it right now it is second and seven with 329 remaining in the third they run it to the short side of the field Troutman pushed out of bounds by Chris Carter that time at the 18-yard line. Troutman going to get a lot of work. Henry just moments ago out of the game. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins. You know, Mark, Texas is playing hard, and they're playing much better defensively. Still, though, they have nine missed tackles, and that's better than they've been doing, but uh, overall, you cannot miss that many people. They're playing with a lot of determination, though. You notice that Chris Akins is back in with a hip injury and the heel, the heart uh, arch injury, and Chris Carter has the knee injury, but he's in there as well. All right, Dean, they face third and three right now. Backs out of the eye. Troutman is the deep back. Keith Miller is the lead blocker on this play. They're going to throw it back to Hessler, and Troutman reverses his field. He spun on a dime and didn't leave any change. Touchdown, Colorado! point is good from Leslie but I'm telling you there's 11 guys on the field wearing burnt orange and white that are still looking for Troutman I mean he spun around like a record on a turntable well, you know Troutman got the pitch and he wanted to throw the football back to John Hessler and this whole Texas secondary which is very savvy did not buy this watch the pitch play watch Hessler take off now Trotman wants to throw the football. He sees absolutely nobody to throw the football to. And let's see if there's any missed tackles coming down the stretch here. 
Not really. Nope. Troutman just gets into the end zone. What a heads-up play by Herschel Troutman. That could have been a disaster, and he turned it into a touchdown for Colorado, and they take control of this football game right now. Colorado with the lead, and one more look at the improvisational skills of Herschel Troutman. You see all the Texas people running to the ball to the left side. That's where they expect it to go. But what does it do? It just seals things up for Troutman. Oh, boy, that's just the way Rick Neuheisel drew this thing. Oh, up. yeah, right. <laughs> Check out the hang time by Troutman, too. They did all right. They might want to put that one in the playbook. Troutman just 5'7", but standing tall on that play. Colorado now with the lead. 21 to 17. Now look at his numbers running the ball. 18 rushes, 86 yards, but more importantly, he's zero for zero throwing the football. <laughs> That's how he got in the end zone. Making a wise, astute decision, too. Colorado leading for the first time this afternoon, much to the delight of this loquacious crowd. Scarborough and Mitchell back for the kick. Scarborough out of the end zone. Scarborough out to the 24-yard line. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. Mark, it's time for the Burger King College Football Play of the Day. Warwick Dunn from his own 35, watch this little cut right there, and then runs into one of his own players, but still takes off. A nice move there, and then the dive after the speed towards the end zone. Warwick Dunn 65 yards on the touchdown run, part of Florida State's 21-17 lead over Virginia. Mark. All right, John, the identical score right here. 3.06 to play in the third quarter, and this crowd is alive in a big way. They run the quick trap to Ricky Williams. And Williams is out over the 30, stopped at the 32-yard line by Navies and my Steve Rodka. Texas has to get a drive going here in the third quarter. They've only had nine plays so far in the second half. 24 yards up until this drive, so they only have about 30 yards here in the second half. It is second down and three. It's Gerald lining up in the wing position right. It's Williams again running over the right side. Williams falling forward to about the 33-yard line. He'll be two yards short of the first down. Matt Russell, number 16, making the stop for Colorado. Matt Russell, the stalwart, a key cog in that defense for Colorado. You know, his father is in the Air Force or was in the Air Force, and he's lived all over the world. Picked up a lot of soccer skills. He was on a traveling team over in England, their national junior team, actually, and still says soccer is his preferred sport. Interesting point. That's Greg Jones down on the field. But getting back to number 16, Russell, for Colorado, you mentioned the fact that he played soccer. Whenever you see athletes or hear of athletes, John, playing soccer, they always have good footwork. They do. Now, that's a sport there that where it always transfers over. Sure, I think Akeem Olajuwon is a name that comes to mind when you think of guys with soccer backgrounds. Soccer skills never hurt you. 209 remaining. Russell with seven tackles today. The lone blemish on Colorado's schedule this year was against Michigan when they lost right here on this field. And here's a look back, our Marriott moment. Colorado, Michigan. Some magical moments in that game as well. It's third down and one. Back to the action. Sean Mitchell. And it's going to be close. It's going to be very close. The official calls for the chains and a measurement. You know, we talked to show a little bit of that Michigan game there, which is such a key game. Colorado lost that game 20 to 13. They didn't score in the second half. They've gone a stretch of 42 games where they scored in the second half. Did it in that game. 
and they dropped in the polls considerably. Rick Neuheisel taking a lot of heat after that game because they felt that Colorado is losing respect nationally. And as they progress through this season, it looks like Texas does indeed get a first down. At that point, they were the highest rated team with one loss. But after that, now they've dropped. And here's that Michigan game right there. 13 points only, only 70 rushing yards, 287 yards. But the 14 penalties for 99 yards is really what hurts this team in that football game. And when you are a young head coach, when you lose a game like that, the criticism is that much more harsh. Williams running on first and 10, trying the right side again. Gains about two yards. Well, I think, you know, Neuheisel has that fresh approach, that young approach, and everybody's all for it. But when things go wrong, people turn on him pretty quickly, say all oh, the team's undisciplined and they're having too much fun and everything else. I like his approach. We've had the pleasure of being with the four youngest head coaches in college football, John Blake, Steve Mariucci, Ron Cooper, and this man, Rick Neuheisel, and they all are doing a great job with their football team this year. Yep, second down and eight now for Texas. They take the draw, Brown to pass. Going for Adams. Is he inbounds? Yes, he is at the 32. James Brown dropped that in there nicely. A 31-yard pickup for Texas. James Brown displaying a lot of aplomb on that pass. Michael Adams works beautifully outside of the double coverage. He, little fake and go move here that he exhibits on or shows on Davis. Let's see if that right foot gets down. Little out and up move on Torrey Davis. And I know Steve Rosga is one guy that came over and argued vehemently that his foot was out of bounds. And here's Ricky Williams on the sweep. And he's chopped down on the corner by Ron Merkerson. One of the fastest running linebackers on that team. Maybe the fastest. And that'll be a loss of about one yard for Texas. With 46 seconds to play now in the third quarter. And Steve Rosga is the injured player on the turf for Colorado. They could ill afford to have him knocked out of this game. One more look at Williams. See if we can find what happens with Rodsko on this play number 15. He's a senior free safety on this team. There's been a lot of Rodsgas who've played college football. Jeff played at Minnesota. His brother Tim is currently playing at Wisconsin. And of course, Steve is here. You know, they came out of Creighton Durham High School in St. Paul, Minnesota for 12 straight years. Uh, Rosga played safety, shortstop, point guard, wide receiver, and kicker on that high school team. Are you trying to say they own the place? <laughs> that's, that's 12 <laughs> years in a row. Yeah, they, they might change the name of the high school. <laughs> Rosga High. Tomorrow, don't miss final round coverage, folks, of the Tour Championship. Tom Lehman is at 13 under, and VJ Singh at 4 under, nine shots back. That's tomorrow at 3 Eastern, 2 Central and Pacific on ABC Sports. And Tiger Woods, of course, way back in the field. His father suffering a little bronchitis and Tiger very much concerned playing with a heavy heart yesterday unable to play his best one more look at the tail end of that play where Steve Rosgo was shaken up he's now on his feet yeah there's number 15 right there it gets hit and crushed down to the ground people fall on him. it looked like he was cracked back on yeah Mike Adams the wide receiver came in and decked him A hard-hitting game, and Coy Detmer right there, one of the victims of some hard hits today. Watch Mike Adams, 83, crack down on Rosga right there. Rosga doesn't see it, and man, he gets blindsided. It is perfectly legal, and it's a big hit by Mike Adams. Second down and 11 for Texas with the ball at the 33-yard line. 35 seconds to play now in the third quarter. You get That's the idea Texas playing a little physical today? Oh, yeah, they're bringing it. Fitzgerald in motion. Here's Sean Mitchell. Mitchell slithering through the defense, lacerating the defense for a Texas first down at the 18. Matt Russell made the tackle, but not before Mitchell picked up 15 yards to move the chains. You know, that play is actually a lateral, but they get the ball to Mitchell so quickly, he's able to turn it upfield. That is actually a rush for him. Six rushes, 36 yards. It's not a pass play. 
and he turns it up inside his offensive lineman. He's got blazing speed. A great complimentary backfield when you look at Priest Holmes, Sean Mitchell, and Ricky Williams. Nine seconds remaining now in the third quarter. Texas trailing by four. And they're going to let the clock wind down. Mike Evans, number 83, in a jubilant mood, as are these Colorado fans. They lead by four. We'll return with more action between Texas and Colorado after this message and a word from our ABC station. It's country driving. It's fancy coat and tie. Ooh, it's the football team. Your beauty queen. It's wide. settled for good enough. Would things ever be good enough? The luxurious Chrysler LHS. Now get a lease for just $3.59 a month. The Chrysler LHS. This goes way beyond good enough. One week from Sunday. It has the most powerful gas and diesel engines of any full-size pickup. It has the most available payload and towing. It has the roomiest cab of all. And better resale value than Ford, Chevy, or GMC. It's the truck that wrote a whole new rule book. Now available in a leather-bound edition. Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. We always said the Accord could save you money. Right now, you can lease a Honda Accord LX for $239 a month for 24 months and a $750 down payment. Don't get caught in the mousetrap. That story today at 5. As we are back now for the beginning of the fourth and final quarter in this Big 12 clash between Colorado and Texas. The Buffaloes leading by four. Herschel Troutman gave them the lead with a sweet touchdown run a few minutes ago. First and ten for Texas. In Colorado Territory, Sean Mitchell with a nice run just a few moments ago down to the 13-yard line. And look at the numbers after three quarters. Colorado with 396 yards. They come into this game averaging 460, so they're on pace. They're out gaining. Texas and ahead by four points. They're out gaining by about 120 yards. So both teams moving the football effectively. The two turnovers have pretty much even things out on the scoreboard. But I think it's all going to come down to these last 15 minutes right now. And Colorado's run defense has been good too, holding Texas to just 109 yards. Second and five. James Brown hands it off to Mitchell. Mitchell down to the seven yard line and close to a Texas first down. John. Interesting how it was Williams, Williams, Williams. Now it seems to be Mitchell, Mitchell, Mitchell. Ziegler making the tackle for Colorado. Well, you know, Sean Mitchell was hurt earlier this year. Last year he had 1,099 yards. He came into this game with just 227 yards. Not nearly as productive as he has been in the running game. But certainly he's the fresher of the backs right now. He's got eight carries, 47 yards. He ran for over 1,000 yards a year ago, 1,099 yards. First and goal for the Texas Longhorns. Trying to snap a four-game losing streak against Colorado. The counter, Mitchell. Collard and brought down at the four-yard line. He's trying to get a face mask call. Ron Merkerson came across with his left arm. 
Well, I've been impressed by Murkison this afternoon, John. He has been all over the field. You know, Texas loves to counter Trey around the goal line. They run this very effectively. Watch 33 right here, Nickerson. Yeah, and see if that's a face mask. That should have been called an incidental face mask. There's a look at the speedy linebacker. And Sean Mitchell now receiving the bulk of the work. The 11th play of the drive coming up. Brown, the toss to Mitchell. Cuts it inside, and he is oh, stopped boy. cold at the three. There is some hard hitting on the inside. Look at Ryan Black, number six. A.J. Kristoff, the defensive coordinator, says he reads plays and diagnoses them quicker than anybody he's ever coached. And number six comes flying through there and just makes a great hit. What six? Ryan Black just come flashing through here at the last set. Boom! Right there, he makes the hit. Third and goal, John, from the two-yard line. Holmes in motion. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Matt Davis. James Brown, cooler than the other side of the pillow. Texas takes back the lead. And James Brown led a very workmanlike, rhythmic, authoritative drive down the field. Matt Davis catching the pass. Dawson now with the extra point attempt. And Texas taking a three-point lead. This is a team looking for a rebirth, and so far they've found it. As strong as I could be, I go around. Nothing ever got to me. At the end of the day, there's only one full size pickup that's best in initial quality. I go Chevy CK. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. I go Some of the most admired cars you'll see are owned by the guys who know cars best. They're ASC certified master mechanics. And the number one brand of motor oil these guys use in their own cars and trucks is Valvoline, makers of DuraBlend, the leading semi-synthetic for a cleaner engine due to better control of harmful deposits. So use the oil the mechanics who take care of your car use to take care of theirs. Valvoline. People who know use Valvoline. on your chest will be the souls of those who came before. You will be an individual, but triumph as a team. You will know strength, courage, and compassion. You will win what must be won, achieve what must be done. Be all that you can be. You will be a soldier. It's a key Big Ten battle when Penn State hosts Northwestern or regional action from the Pac-10, Big 12, and ACC on an ABC College Football doubleheader next Saturday. Back in Boulder, Texas with a three-point lead with 12-32 remaining. Matt Davis, number 86, catching a touchdown pass just moments ago. Chris Stockton set to kick off. Nunez and Stiggers back deep for Colorado. The question now begging, can Texas hang on? They have relinquished leads this year in the fourth quarter. Most notably against Notre Dame and Oklahoma. It would be a new beginning for this football team if they were able to hold on to this lead and play great defense down the stretch because these are the games they've lost, these tough games against ranked teams. They've had trouble coming down the stretch. And now the official is 
Pointing downfield, and he's going to check now with the referee. Not sure what the delay uh, is. You know what it is? It's the play clock, the 25 second clock. Right there, you can see it. He wanted to put back the 25 seconds. I've never seen that <laughs> before. Well, Miami against West Virginia tonight on ESPN, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Ryan Clement, the Miami quarterback. Questionable for that game. They're hurting after that loss to East Carolina last yeah, they week. Sure are. Stockton's kick travels five yards deep. And Stickers will take it out. Well, in that last touchdown by Texas, Matt Davis gets single coverage on the outside. That's because Mike Adams, who's had a very good football game today, is playing in the slot, and he draws double coverage. Right there, you can see here and here. There's where Adams is coming into the middle. And that allows Matt Davis to work one-on-one -on -one with Marcus Washington. That's his first touchdown reception of the year. 6-5, good receiver. And James Brown is having a great football game today. That is his third touchdown pass, and he is the leader all time in Texas history for touchdown passes, passing Peter Gardere this afternoon. That was Lyndon Henry running it out over the left side of the line, brought down by Casey Hampton, number 64. 12-12 remaining. Hampton rotating today with Chris Akins, who has been in and out of the ball game because of injuries. There's a look at Hampton, number 64, the true freshman. 6'1", 317 pounds. What's up, Beaumont? What's up, everybody at home, Mom? Beaumont loves you, JP. <laughs> and here's Henry, a gaping hole up the middle. And a first down for the Buffaloes out of the 34-yard line. Chris Carter making the tackle after the 14-yard pickup. Let's go downstairs to Dean. Guys, that's exactly what Terry Lewis, the offensive line coach, was talking about to his troops on the sideline before this series, talking about plays like that encounters because Texas is running out of the middle defensively. It'll be interesting, John, to note and mark the altitude was a concern coming in, or at least Colorado thought it was something that would play to their favor. We'll see if it does against a Texas defense that really will struggle here if, if the altitude's a concern. First down and 10. Hessler on the option, keeps it himself out to the 37-yard line. Well, you know, John Makovic raised a few eyebrows after the Oklahoma game when he said our football team may not have been in great shape. We seem to get tired in the fourth quarter. And you got to wonder about that. You know, a bunch of college kids, you got to keep them conditioned, and they shouldn't get tired, but uh, it could be a possibility. I have counted seven different defensive linemen being rolled through throughout the afternoon for this Texas front. So, Magadan trying to keep his players as fresh as possible, but the fourth quarter they have withered so far this year. Casey Hampton, speaking of rotating linemen, 64 still in for Aikens. Second and six for Colorado with 10.50 to play in the fourth quarter. Nobody there on the toss. It's loose. And Texas pounces on the loose ball with 17. Gray Mosher, number 95. The villain, if you're a Colorado fan, the man who knocked Coy Detmer out of the ball game, recovered the loose ball. That's a huge turnover for the Longhorns. Lyndon Henry was in the backfield. And watch Hessler. He goes to his left. He reverses out, and he expects Henry to be right there. And that was Henry's mistake because you can see the guard pulling. Kyle Smith, number 52, is pulling. So he went left. The quarterback went left, but Henry went the wrong way. And that has got a rip at the insides of Rick Neuheisel. Meanwhile, John Makovic just got a little younger. <laughs> Although you couldn't tell it by that rather pained expression on his face. Ace formation for the Longhorns. Play fake. Michael Adams was the intended receiver, but he was covered. One more look at that last play. Now watch the linemen. They're going to go this way on this play. See that? There's Kyle Smith, number 52. Now the back should have gone in that direction. That's where the play was designed to go. Henry did not either hear the play right or hear the audible right. And as a result of that, a huge turnover against the Buffaloes. 
Texas and John Makovic's crew now working with a short field. The ball in the 17-yard line, second and 10. 10.37 to play. Ricky Williams still on his feet. And he fumbles it. Do you believe that? Colorado takes it back. Well, I'll tell you what, this defense has come through on several occasions throughout the year. We talked about it in our opening. Defense making big plays down the stretch at crunch time. And right here, Colorado had to come up with a play. Steve Rosga recovered the loose ball. Mike Phillips, number 91, is the guy that stripped the ball loose. Man, that's a big play by Mike Phillips to get his football team back in this game. And there's number 15, Steve Rosga, the man who was shaken up, helped off the field just moments ago, recovering the loose ball. Three turnovers apiece. Out of the backfield, Troutman. First down, Colorado at the 30-yard line. Trey Thomas making the tackle, but not after a 20-yard pickup first. Essler with a nice touch pass that time. No mix-up that time either in the backfield. All right, give me a break here. I'm going to go take a couple sedatives. <laughs> I can't believe the action in this game. I mean, what a great football game. So much action back and forth. Turnovers, a hurt quarterback. And an injured player on the sidelines on the Colorado side of the field. We'll wait and find out exactly who it is and let you know when we do. That might be Trey Thomas. I don't know if I see him out there. Number 17. There's Bucky Godbold speaking to Ricky Williams, who committed a fumble just moments ago. Yeah, it was Thomas, but he's up on his feet now. But it'd be tough to take him out of the game. Texas leads by three when we come back. Okay, folks, show's over. Chevy S10, like a rock. For the very best in home entertainment, the place to go is Circuit City, where right now this RCA digital satellite system is just $199.97 after $200 cash back from DirecTV. Just sign up for one year of DirecTV's Total Choice programming, and the RCA DSS system is yours for only $199.97. Get more movies, more sports, more news, more channels than cable. Plus, get coupons worth over $200 from USSB when you buy any DSS system. Hurry into Circuit City today. take a look at some of the sights and sounds around campus here in Boulder, courtesy of Mike Ortiz, a junior here at Colorado University. <laughs> always the coaches well that was Rick Neuheisel singing with Jimmy Buffett who was in concert here in Boulder not too long ago Troutman running stopped up at the 32 yard line let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins for more well guys you know Rick Neuheisel prefers to be his own man he says that kids are very perceptive and if you're not your own guy they can see through it and you know there's several ways to skin a cat this guy's not going to be a, a Joe Paterno he's not a Bill McCartney he, he has a loose atmosphere but he's a great youthful coach kids can relate to him and I tell you what I don't know that you should misinterpret 
you know, his, his looseness for lack of discipline. He thinks the honeymoon's over, but if he recruits like I think he will, the honeymoon won't be over. A good point, Dean. 9.45 to play in the fourth quarter. Hessler wide open over the middle. His tight end, Brody Hefner, out near midfield. And a first down, a pickup of 16. John Makovic hoping his defense will hold up with the lead. Well, you know, that's using one play for another. For four on the first play of the series, Hessler had thrown the football out in the flat. Here they set up basically the same play and realize Texas overcommits to it and they take the tight end down the middle. That's using one play to set up another play. A real nice job of recognition of what the Texas defense is doing. And look at what Hessler has done since filling in for Coy Detmer. He's been productive and so is Troutman. Except on this play, he stopped up at the 47. Florida State, John Saunders, tell us what's up. Well, they're avenging last year's loss to Virginia. Avenging last year's loss to Virginia. Rock Preston, what a terrific run here. Looks like he's going to be stopped. But the Virginia players run over top of each other, and that pops him loose. Nice move. And he beats the last tackle. He's in 42 yards. 31-17 now, Florida State with the lead over Virginia. Mark, back to you. Well, we have a player down on the field with 9-10 remaining. It's Melvin Thomas, the right tackle for Colorado. Let's take a look at the Big 12 standings in the North Division up to date, up to the moment. Colorado and Nebraska both leading. Nebraska playing a little later tonight. K-State at 4-1. They want to stay there atop the division for the big showdown at the end of the year. Big news in the South, John. Texas Tech winning today against Texas A&M, improving to 4-2. and two. But if Texas can win today, they'll be 3-1, and one, and they face Texas Tech down the road. So they still feel they can win the South Division of this Big 12 Conference and play in that Big 12 Championship game in St. Louis. A game you'll see on ABC December the 7th. Second and seven. Hessler audibly. Troutman over the right side down to the 43 yard line. The clock running with 8.38 to play in the fourth quarter. Well, two things you got to notice that as we look at the Big 12 today. Scores from around the conference. You'd mentioned the audible laying there of Hessler. He made sure his running back knew the play there. Texas Tech with the win, 13 to 10. Missouri in overtime over Oklahoma State. Oklahoma. Kansas State over Oklahoma. Boy, Oklahoma came back in that game. They were down big early. Sooners made it close. Backs out of the eye on third and two for the Buffaloes. Henry has the first down at the 38-yard line, much to the delight of the sellout crowd of over 51,000 strong. Cedric Woodward making the tackle for Texas. And a look at the sea of humanity here at Folsom Field, decked out in black and gold. I'm telling you, John Spagnola, in my next lifetime, I want to come back as a student at Colorado. This is one of the more beautiful campuses in the country. Well, you can always come back and get a postgraduate degree, Mark, if you want to. <laughs> we'll send you back here. Hey, I had enough of school. <laughs> Hessler going up top. His receiver, Carruth, broke the pattern off. And it's incomplete with 7.40 to play. Taji Allen, number two, on the coverage. Hessler and Carruth weren't on the same page there, but don't necessarily fault Hessler. He's got a little smile on his face. A real gentleman of a football player, well liked by his teammates as he works things out with Cruz. Keep in mind, Hessler, you know, he threw the 20 touchdown passes last year. He also had three 300-yard games. He's 137 yards throwing. I'm sorry, 145 in this football game. John, you would automatically think that it would be difficult for him to relinquish the starting position to Detmer, but he's taken it with a lot of grace and poise. And now Texas calls a timeout. They have two remaining as do the Colorado Buffaloes. 24 to 21 when we come back. Like a rock I was strong as I could be Like a rock 
Nothing ever got to me. Chevy's got the highest resale value of any full-size pickup. Like of course, to find that out, you'd have to sell it. I want you to think about discus athletic athletic were made for whatever you like to do like biking football and for you europeans football one brand for every sport you can't say that about these outfits my the unitard that is special unnecessary spending 20 yards so no matter what your game choose discus athletic one thing to wear but pick your colors carefully Car. Take it slow. Everybody okay? Wait a minute, what's he doing? He wants more. Right there. Oh, over there. Diet Dr. Pepper, the taste you've been looking for. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Discus Athletic Activewear. Discus Athletic, the one thing to wear for every sport. Circuit City, the choice for price, selection, and service. And Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. 7.40 remaining in the fourth quarter. I'm Mark Jones, along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins. Colorado trails Texas by three. But they have the ball, second and ten. Hessler, incomplete for his tight end, Brody Hefner. Let's go downstairs to Dean. Guys, Rosga has been in and out of this game, but he's really been playing with bruised ribs. He's been off with his shoulder pads off, getting some oxygen, but says he'll be right back out. Wouldn't miss this one. Four-point game with 7.35 to go. Yeah, Dean, he's made some big plays for them, most notably. He ran back an interception a few games ago. 100 yards for a touchdown. <laughs> Look at that do route, man. I, mean, I love it. He, he shaves his head before every game, then he covers it up with that thing. <laughs> Maybe he could borrow that thing from him sometime. Oh, he's got the look. <laughs> Third and ten for Colorado. Play pick. Hessler incomplete. No flags on the play. And it's fourth and ten. Oh, look at the side judge. And now, wow, that was late. He looked like a mouse turning around trying to find his flag. The side judge, and finally he throws the flag out. That flag came a good three, two, two or three seconds after the whistle, it seemed. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense. So it wasn't pass interference, it was a personal foul call. Hessler going down the middle to Chris Anderson, number 18. Nothing happening there. Oh, and somebody takes a cheap shot at him right at the end, right in the middle of your screen. Oh, and there it is. And that's where that aggressiveness can hurt you. And Matt Jones, number 42, puts the hit on Anderson, and it's a costly mistake for the Longhorns. Boy, does that hurt, because if not for that penalty, then it's fourth and ten for Colorado. Instead, it's first and ten with the ball in the 23-yard line. A look at the penalty situation. Colorado just seven today. And I say just seven because that's a little bit below their average. Three wide receivers. They run the draw to Troutman. Stopped up at the 21-yard line. It has been an extremely hard-hitting game today. Coy Detmer, the starting quarterback for Colorado, was knocked out earlier, and he still looks a little bit glassy out, John. Well, you know you have short-term memory loss when you get hit like that. There's just certain gaps, and there's the guy, Gray Mosier, who knocked him to the turf. But when you have a concussion, there's just certain gaps in your memory short-term that you just can't pull together, and it's like you're living in a sort of an out-of-body experience. Second down and eight. Hessler. <laughs> what a completion. He caught that on the ground, Hefner did. 
He was lying yes, down on the carpet when he caught it at the 18. You know, that was that very same play, the fake pass out to the flat, back to Hefner in the middle. This time, Texas plays it. Watch number 86 right here. Look at this reception, everybody. What do you think of that? <laughs> And Hessler took a bit of a shot after he delivered the ball. Matt Jones again, number 42, coming in on him. You know what? You better watch. Yeah, he eases up at the end after getting hit with that previous personal foul call. Third and four. They've got to get to the 13. A look at the current drive. Henry close to the first down. It's going to be close. The tackle by number 49, Aaron Humphrey. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. It's short of a first down by about one yard. Well, he has a decision here. Does he kick the field goal and tie this football game? Or does Rick Neuheisel roll the dice and go for the first down on fourth down? They're going to go for it. Hessler still in the ball game. The play comes in from the sideline. Caruth, one of the wide receivers in the ball game. Henry, the back. And Keith Miller, number 35, is the fullback out of the eye. Oh, okay. And the play clock, okay. dangerously close to expiring, and Colorado uses a timeout. They now have just one remaining. 5-10 to play in the fourth quarter. Colorado, fourth and one when we come back. Well, this concludes our tour of the Bud Light Brewery. Thank you very, very much. Hey, look, everybody. It's a new guy. Hey, new guy. New guy. Hey, new guy. Name's Jim. Been here since September 93. This here's Fred. He took the tour in 92. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Welcome to paradise. Make it a Bud Light. You need anything from the outside. I'm the guy you see. Okay? Chips, pretzels. In an age of streamlining and downsizing, Chili still makes its big mouth burgers by hand, one at a time, by a person. What this lacks in efficiency is more than made up for in taste. Chili's big mouth burgers, monuments of inefficiency. Play football at Chili's this season. In every restaurant, you can win two round trip tickets on Southwest Airlines to anywhere they fly. A football or Chili's big mouth burgers, all just for playing. Chevy Blazer, the only sport utility vehicle with the driver control system. It's nice to know it's there. Back to the action, 5-10 remaining in the fourth quarter. Fourth and one for Rick Neuheisel's Colorado Buffaloes with the ball. You know, he didn't go for it before. They tried to draw Texas offsides. I thought they were going to line up and kick a field goal. Now it looks like they are, in fact, going to go for it, Mark. Yep, Miller and Troutman. Henry now with the ball. He's got the first down. They ran the ISO with Miller leading the way. And Matt Jones made the tackle, but not before Colorado got the first down. And I saw an article on Rick Neuheisel today where he said he, he was brushing up on the overtime rule. Maybe he wasn't quite sure enough about the rule and wanted to go for it on fourth down. Good blocking over the left side behind Kyle Smith, the left guard. When he was a freshman, Kyle Smith's nickname was Scud. They said he'd fire off the ball, but nobody knew where he was going. He yeah. certainly knew he was going there and created a good surge in that Texas Longhorn front. Yeah, they're on the mark. Fisk and Henry now out of the eye. The roof in motion. Play fake. Complete at the two-yard line to the tight end, Hefner. And it's first and goal to go. Boy, Hefner came into this game with six receptions. He has six receptions today alone for 65 hey, hey, yards. Brody Hefner having himself a whale of a football game. 
The tight end position has been a position of attrition, as you mentioned. And here's a look at the big catch. Watch number 86 on the left side of your screen coming across. Hessler does a great job of setting up. And I love the arm strength of this young man. John Hessler can really stick the football in there when he has to. Let's go downstairs to Dean. As we're right here by Coach Neuheisel, his team's very excited, but what he's trying to do right now is to get John Hessler to control everyone and to use every second off the clock that they can. So they've rehuddled, they've got a fresh 25 now, and he'll go down to five seconds before they snap it. They now become curators of the clock. Well, you know, probably if you had the best of all worlds, you'd like to score on second or third down here and even eat up another minute or so of the clock. The key word, of course, being scored, John. Yeah, that's right. Ruth in motion. Henry, no signal yet, and he did not get in. He stopped just inside the one-yard line. The clock running with 3.53 to play in the fourth. This is going to be the 16th play of the drive. This drive started on Colorado's own 10-yard line. Hessler has been the man of the moment for Colorado, filling in for the injured Coy Detmer. He went out with a concussion in the second quarter. Hessler is 11 of 19 today for a total of 160 yards. Hessler still waiting for a signal. Still waiting. No signal. Touchdown, Colorado! Leslie in for the extra point. Colorado takes the lead back from Texas. Out of the hold of Steve Rosga, who was shaken up earlier and might be playing with broken ribs. Colorado with a 28 to 24 lead with 310 remaining. Well, the tough yards today for Colorado been right up the middle. Hessler getting a good hug from his head coach, Rick Neuheisel. Right behind Adam Reed, the transfer from Northwestern. He's the center. And over that right guard, Chris Nioli. That was Hessler. a late signal, too. It really was. Well, he's lost in the pile there, and they had to pull some of the people off. And finally, when the call is made, Neuheisel exults. One new Heisel, you know, broke the rule, went against the book there on fourth and short when he did take the short points to tie this football game up, left himself in the position to be second guessed. But his team came through, and now they have a four point lead. A drive that started on their own 10 ends in a sneak for a touchdown. Yeah, and the key part of that was that personal foul penalty. Matt Jones was the culprit on the play for Texas. Right. On third and 10, he committed a personal foul, a late hit on Chris Anderson, which kept the Colorado drive alive. A drive eclipsing 16 plays, 90 yards, using up 718 on the clock. 310 remaining, and Matt Jones, number 42, is firing up his team and getting a few words from his coach right now. Don't sleep on Texas because James Brown has thrown three touchdown passes today. For Colorado, when they've won games this year, they've been in some tight battles. They played well for in the fourth quarter. They certainly did last week against Kansas to pull out a 20 to 7 win or to preserve a 20 to 7 lead, I should say. There's Leslie's kick. Sean Mitchell out to the 26-yard line. Here's the key play of that drive. The incomplete pass 
And right there, Matt Jones with the late hit on Chris Anderson. Uncalled for, unnecessary, and it really hurt John Makovic and the Texas Longhorns. Now look at that last scoring drive by Colorado. Texas with two timeouts remaining. Colorado with one timeout remaining. Look at that drive, though. That's, you know, five yards of play. That was a methodical drive. Sure was. James Brown now has a chance to seek that renewal, to seek that redemption for Texas. Quick three-step drop, complete. A gain of about eight yards to Wayne McGarity. Downstairs to Dean. Guys, what a battle here. You got two offensive wizards in New Heisel and McAvick going back and forth. And I'm here with John McAvick, and he was just talking to his coaches upstairs about the fact that his players are now prepared to go out of bounds when they have to to stop the clock. So they are very well disciplined and well schooled in knowing what to do here. Dean James Brown, 14 of 26, 180 yards, second down and one. Uh, Brown, it's going to be a penalty for sure. And that is pass interference. No doubt, McGarity got hit even before the ball came close to him. Yeah, Ryan Black came in and hit him way too soon. There was a wholesale substitution by the Buffaloes. They're going now to their five or six defensive back. Situation substitution late in this football game. But Black clearly had hit McGarity way before the football arrived. No doubt. Hey, with 2.29 to play, First and 10 for Texas with the ball in the 46 yard line. Folks, time permitting, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. Ricky Williams behind James Brown. There's the counter they like to run. Williams fumbled last time but squeezes the ball this time. Moving it down to the 46 and into Colorado territory. Three yards short of the first down. Tomorrow on ABC, an hour of America's Funniest Home Videos. Then Lois and Clark. I guess they're still married. Then Harrison Ford stars with Samuel L. Jackson and then Archer. And Tom Clancy's Patriot Games all tomorrow night on ABC. Under two minutes to play in the fourth. Colorado blitzing. Brown to Adams. Oh, yeah, that was interference. Marcus Washington has been victimized time and again this afternoon on two touchdown passes and right there on the pass interference. Well, Adams and Washington have been going at it all afternoon. Bump and run, man to man coverage. You mentioned the blitz, and that's what you have. But you got to ask yourself is this football catchable? And the answer from the official is yes, it was. And there's a penalty against Marcus Washington. So Texas moving the football very efficiently in this drive. Making up some yards rather quickly. Defense, 10-yard penalty from previous spot, first down. The ball is now in the 36-yard line. The drive started on their own 24. First down and 10, Texas with 147 to play. Remember, Washington was victimized earlier by that touchdown reception by Mike Adams. Williams, the lone back behind Brown. Adams dropped it. Do you believe that? He might have been counting six points before he caught it. You won't see that happen often. No, you sure won't. Mike Adams is working against Dalton Simmons, number seven, in short coverage, the safeties in deep coverage. You know, he started to look downfield because he saw the safety coming over to make a hit. Second down and 10 now, 143 to play. They hand it off to Williams. He's got a big hole. Flag down on the play. Williams out of bounds, has the first down at the 25, but let's wait and see if this 11-yard gain will stand. You know, that flag came out from the field judge. It's one of two things, either two men on the, too many men on the field, or you might have a hold on the tight end. That's where the field judge is looking. He first counts players, and then he looks to see the tight end position. 
Matt Russell acting as if it is against Texas. And he also is supposed to watch the clock, so we'll see what it is. We have a dead ball, ball start, offense. Boy, that's odd that it, that would come from the field judge, who's all the way back in the secondary, and the umpire and the referee who are supposed to make that call don't, don't make it, or the lines judge. Very interesting. Hmm. Rick Neuheisel certainly will take it, though. <laughs> Why not? Let's see if we can see anybody with a false start. I didn't see anybody move. Boy, that's, that's, and, close. that's you know, tough. Again, to have that call made from where it was is a little bit suspicious to me. Second down and 15 now. I'm one of those conspiracy theorists, <laughs> theorists though. Look at the timeout situation. Texas with a pair. Colorado with one. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> there we go. Take a breath. There we go. And the ball now back at the 41. 143 to go on the floor. Adams split wide to the top of your screen. Over the middle. Picked off. Rosca. And Steve Rosga may have sealed it for Colorado. Steve Rosga made a key play in the fourth quarter of the Kansas game last week. He comes up big again this week. Colorado by four with the ball when we come back. There are lots of reasons to buy life insurance. Here are two great ones. I'm State Farm agent Mike Foley. As the Goff family has grown, so have their life insurance needs. That's why we get together for family insurance checkups. I make sure to explain all the options, then they decide on the plan that's right for them. Ask your State Farm agent for a family insurance checkup. It's a great way to learn about life. This is the desert. And these are Chevy trucks. About the only thing growing out here is our reputation. The most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Chevy trucks, like a rock. Send your package in two days with FedEx and people are impressed. Cost, about $12. Send your package in two days with UPS and people are impressed. Cost, about $6. Send your package in two to three days with priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service, and people are impressed. Cost, $3. So, 12, 6, 3, what's your priority? Priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. Steve Rosgo with the interception, but Marcus Washington right here. Check him out. He's really not going to get fooled at all by the play action. See, he's already working into his drop as a nickelback. And James Brown has to throw the football over him. Because of that, Rosk is able to drive on the football and make the interception. And there's the reaction from a jubilant sideline for Colorado. That play reminiscent of James Brown against Notre Dame forcing a pass in there. Troutman running up the middle out to the 39-yard line. 1.30 to play in the fourth quarter. Rosko was shaken up earlier, playing with bruised ribs. Let's get the Halloween look going, doesn't he? He's getting ready to hollow skulls on his head. <laughs> I know why. If that guy came to my house trick-or-treating, I would deadbolt the door. Give him the house. And turn the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> and throw the candy. Look at all those skulls on his head. Got to add a couple crossbones there, Josh <laughs> yeah, Bagnola. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, he could be a pirate, that guy. Yeah. 
Well, the Rosgas are one for one today because his brother Tim, who plays for Wisconsin, lost today. The Badgers losing. I'm Mark Jones along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins. We have 1.30 to play in the fourth quarter. And Colorado has the ball leading Texas 28 to 24. Just moments ago, James Brown threw an interception into the hands of Steve Rosga. And now Colorado has the ball. And Texas is down to just one timeout remaining. A look at the up-to-date Big 12 standings. Colorado hoping to improve to 4-0 should they hang on and move ahead of Nebraska who plays at 7 o'clock tonight. Troutman falling down and Texas is going to burn its last time out. The tackle by Hampton. And a look at the South Division standings. Texas would drop to 2-2 two and two, and Texas Tech by virtue of their win against Texas A&M this afternoon improving to 4-2. But two losses in that division already. I mean, you look at the lost side, two losses does not knock you out of this division. It keeps you right in the race. Not at all. And the Oklahoma Sooners with a key game next week at home against Nebraska. A game that you will see on ABC. A lot of talented people behind the cameras here at ABC that you never get a chance to see. The coordinating producer of ABC's College Football is Bob Goodrich. Associated coordinating producer is Jim Ressler. Today's game produced by Kim Belton, directed by Patrick McManus. College Football Today produced by Charles Coplin. College Football Today directed by Calvin Haywood. College Football Today technical director, Karen Obel. New York remote coordinator is Bruce Clark. Our technical director, the incomparable Rich Gelber. Our associate director, John Pisoni. Our production manager is Maria Acevedo. Our technical operations manager, is Joe Carsoni. Our assistants to the producer, Kevin Smooth Miller and <laughs> Noah Scheinman. And our stat man, Roger Riley. And our spotter is Eagle Eye Bill Bresler. Mr. Wake Up Call. Mm -hmm. And our sideline coordinator is Dave Hatter. And our technical manager is Joe Caracol. 115 to play in the fourth quarter. Texas and John Makovic out of timeouts. You know, when you look at the Texas sideline there, John, they came into this ball game looking towards and forward to a new season, looking for a renewal of sorts. They may have found it, even though this game always isn't over, but. a month, 500 down. I'm never gonna let go. Mazda, customized for value, 626. I got a passion for the road. Deal with the professionals. APA cheating and death. Deal with the professionals. Deal with the pros. Deal with the people you expect to know. Deal with our people because the work gets around. Uh, they both ran into problems early. And John Makovic on the sidelines, his voice intoning passionately, looking for a big return. Mike Adams standing back at his own 24-yard line. He had a 66-yard punt return in the first half today. And he dropped a key pass not too long ago. A chance for redemption here, and they kick it away from him towards the sidelines. It'll be spotted at the 29-yard line with 37 seconds to go. Texas out of timeouts. That was a great job by Nick Peach, getting rid of that football. 
How many times do you see a punter take his time? He got that ball and just kicked it as quickly as he could. That's a terrific job. And Nick's going to be a little sore because he got tattooed early in this game. But, you know, Texas, no timeouts left. But in college football, with 37 seconds left, every first down they get, the clock does stop. They're in a desperate situation. Let's see what they can do. The ball at the 29. Three receivers out to the left of James Brown. Downfield, complete to Adams. First down, clock stops with 31 seconds to play in the fourth. A 16-yard pickup. The ball is at the 45. This game is not over yet, folks. Three receivers out to the right again of James Brown. And he spikes it to stop the clock. You get a chance to call a play now. Well, you know, it's interesting. That play took, I mean, the first play took five seconds. That play took three seconds. What was a 16-yard pickup? The other one right there, you know, was a play in which three seconds were called off. The only, the only reason why, maybe Adams wasn't out of bounds, and in fact, they ruled he was inbounds, and so they started the clock immediately. So yeah, that was a play by Texas. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Let's try to figure that out for a second. There's a look at Adams. Five receptions, 113 yards today. And a touchdown catch. There's contact by the nose tackle. The leg motion by James Brown drew him off sides. If you're Rick Neuheisel, that's the last thing you want to see. Yeah, Ryan Olson, number 55, bumped into the center. Dead ball, ball start, offense. Oh, it's against the offense. Oh, uh, you know what? Maybe they're saying he was drawn offside. Put 28 on the clock. Ball back at the 40-yard line now. Downfield, it's complete, and they don't get out of bounds. White doesn't get out of bounds. They'll stop the clock while they move the chains after the 27-yard pickup. 20 seconds to play. James Brown signaling he's going to spike it. Be a great time for one of those Dan Marino plays where you fake the spike and throw it downfield. Uh, the right motion. tackle jumps, yeah. Jay Humphrey, number 67. Illegal motion on the right side. Watch this job by Brian White right here. He's lined up in the middle. And watch the pass by James Brown. There's not a lot of room to stick this football in there. But he just drilled. Look at that. Among four defenders for Colorado, James Brown sticks that football in there. Not sure that five yards is going to really hurt them that much right now. No. Texas is going to have to take a couple shots in the end zone. They may try and take one more shot and pick up some yards, and that'll give them a chance for two shots into the end zone. Brown juggled the snap. Fires to the sideline, incomplete. Stops the clock with nine seconds to go. McGarrity, the intended receiver. Yeah, that was the play to try and get some yards, Mark. Now Texas has to take at least two chances and throw the football into the end zone. James Brown with a gallon effort this afternoon. Three touchdown passes, but one crucial interception on their last possession. Nine seconds in the fourth quarter remaining. Colorado with five defensive backs in. Brown's going to go into the end zone for Adams. And it's incomplete with two seconds to play. Adams is the only receiver in the end zone. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know why Texas isn't sending three or four receivers in now. And they certainly have to with two seconds left. And there's Rick Neuheisel. And these two seconds cannot end soon enough for him. If there's any team that's wary of the Hail Mary, <laughs> yeah. it's Colorado, i.e. Michigan, Colorado, a couple of years ago. 
Well, this is where you just take, you know, all your defenders and line them up on the goal line defensively. Keep everything in front of you. Here's the last play of the game. James Brown for Adams. Ticked up and incomplete. Colorado wins. The genuine Chevrolet MVPs of the game are James Brown from Texas and Steve Rosga of Colorado. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. It's a